Shadow Fox, is that cover? Is it cover or is it not cover? The legend, the man, the myth himself. <laughs> this man is the most. Welcome to In Conversation With. I'm your host, Single Malt, and you're listening to the Dofus Podcast. It's a show with the best and brightest of Dofus players, content creators, whatever they may do. Today, we're joined by the celebrity that you all recognized, Coverer. <laughs> we will try not to um, make him blush too much because as you can already tell, he is quite timid. And to accom accommodate for the type of person that he is, the vibe that I got from him, I've decided to introduce a bit of a departure from the usual way of doing things. And that will manifest in two things. The chat will be a lot more informal and less structured. That's the number one. And number two, which was his proposition, it was to make it a bit more interactive, which means he will be asking me questions to make him feel more comfortable and so that we make it a conversation rather than a sort of formal interview. Are we happy with those terms, Cover? Yes, sir. Sounds so good. good. Fabulous, fabulous. First of all, how are you doing? How are you feeling? I know that you don't stream pretty much a lot. You prefer to make videos and things like that. How are you feeling about the whole experience so far? I'm doing good. Uh, today's a good day. It's good weather. I don't know about uh, where uh, the weather where you are. Um, yeah. It's pretty sunny here. I know we have a time difference. Uh, like time zone difference. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still sunny here, but uh, it's a nice oh, that's day. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah, I'm feeling good. Um, I don't stream that much, but I plan to in the future. We'll get more into that later. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. Uh, just about the weather. If you know anybody from the UK, there's absolutely no point in ever asking them about the weather because <laughs> it's grim and glub pretty much all the time and they have strong feelings about it. So you just mention of the weather gets them going. <laughs> it's a yeah, bonding experience here. <laughs> Always raining over there. <laughs> all the time you know the story in the bible of 40 days of rain that's what we call a fantastic summer here in the uk <laughs> yeah no, there's there's actually people that like that like the rain um but there's not that many of them yeah very rare but yeah um, in typical fashion, I like to start with a few anecdotes uh, that tie me to the country of origin. And this is something that you may not know about uh, Cover, who is our guest today. Is uh, the country of origin, I will give it away through the first anecdote. Um, some time ago, when, uh, my, when I was about five, six, just barely gaining consciousness, growing up as a human being and realizing that I exist... Um, at that point in time, my father had a critical decision to make in life that could have meant I could have been Canadian instead of Moroccan, which is peculiar. He used to work in the Ministry of Tourism and was sent in a special mission in Canada to do a master's degree and help set something up there. And during his time there, he had such a good time and made so many connections that he was invited for a special kind of visa route where he could have brought his family, started work there. This was in the 90s, mind you. Uh, and he could have just became Canadian instantly and had all of us join him. But he decided not to do that. I don't know why. We still need to have a chat about that. <laughs> I could have been Canadian. So that was the first anecdote. Uh, the second one, you've already noticed this cover, but I, I have a bit of a big mouth when the mood is right. At a party, uh, in a podcast, but it's not always the case. But when the mood is right, good grief do I talk a lot. And that led me to meet a certain young lady back at university who was Canadian. And I've had more than one drink in me that evening. And we got talking and I wanted to impress her at all costs. And I said... What does it take to go on a date with you? And she named her price. She told me, tell me something that will impress me about my country, where I come from. So she was Canadian. And boy, I was, oh boy, I was ready for that one. <laughs> I told her the number of provinces, the regions, the neighborhood with, with America and everything. Every piece of trivia that I knew, I just chucked it at, it, at her. Second largest landmass and everything. Suffice to say, date secured <laughs> it helps oh. to be a nerd <laughs> you're good uh, in geography yes i love geography it's one of my favorite topics overall yeah and the very last one is a more recent one um 
it has to do with the decision I was going to make some decade ago. I had the opportunity to come and study and live in one of two countries. I've decided on it was either going to be the UK or Canada for reasons that you know now. The proximity, the knowledge of the country and the history that I have with the country. And the decision came down to one last day where I thought, I'll just go to the UK. It looks much better. It's closer to Morocco. It's a two and a half hour, three hour flight, as opposed to the difficulty, the harsh weather and the distance with Canada. And the rest is history. That's why I'm a UK uh, person right now. I live, work here and I'm not in Canada. So these are the anecdotes. Coverer, welcome to the podcast. I hope that tells you a fair bit about me as a person. That brings me a new closer. What what did you make of all these three anecdotes? <laughs> Uh, thank you. Uh, I didn't know you were actually from the UK, uh, but that uh, that explains it with your accent, actually. And I don't know if you noticed about uh, something about my my English accent. Um, I don't usually get any comments about it, so mm-hmm. I don't know. How, how do I sound? Uh, do, do I sound Canadian? Um, I did. You didn't tell me that you were Canadian. I've surmised it from one little crucial detail about your accent, since you've asked about it. It is... Uh, it is, I think there's a hint of French pronunciation in some letters in there. And that's what sort of gave it away. I thought there has to be some French there. And the only country with such a strong binational, bi duolingual is Quebec, Canada. Is that, did I get it right from just that? You, you did, you did. Um, I'm actually in Quebec. <laughs> so I do speak French and English. Holy I, I also, I also, I still speak a third <laughs> language as well, but it's a bit weaker than the, the first two. Oh? Oh, do you want to guess what it is? Oh, chat. Come on, let's put a chat up for this. There is a third language in the mix. It is weaker than French and English, but it is yeah. there. What could it be? <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It's not uh, it's not from North America, if that helps. Oh, not from the North of America. Is it, could it be Arabic? Could it be? Uh, any more guesses? <laughs> Chavi say in Arabic. Ah, uh, Jay said, saying mildly Canadian. We've got some Italian, Espanol, Portuguese, Spanish. This is actually Suffice fun. To say, international, you are. <laughs> for a lot of people here, like, uh, this is probably your first impression of me. So, I and I love first impressions. So, I want to know, like, where do people think I come from? Well, obviously, you know, I'm Canadian, but I have an origin. Like, my parents don't come from Canada. So, mm-hmm. so this it is, is it, yeah, it's interesting to see what people Mm. think. Canada is a big country of immigration and as I said earlier I could have been Canadian but I definitely was not born there. Yeah. What's ex-hosa Jay? Africa? Oh so South Africa. South Africa? That is a really good shout. (laughs) Could could it even be New Zealand maybe? I don't know who's saying that. (laughs) <laughs> Come on, Should give I, it away, tell I spoil us. Spoil it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give us cut the suspense short. <laughs> All right. I think uh me and you have uh a, a bit of a common language. What? Not exactly the same language, but uh-huh. we can maybe understand each other a little bit. No. I speak, I speak Arabic. No. So hey. <laughs> wow. So who guessed that? Xavi. It was Xavi. Wow. Xavi. Folks. Wow, yeah. do we get any approximation? Is it Algeria, yeah, yeah, maybe you, Tunisia? So it's not in Africa, it's in the Middle East. I, I'm i uh, Lebanese, Canadian. My God, the French now make so much sense. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm... I don't know if it, it's it, like... My French is not really linked to, 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 to Lebanon. Mm. I was born and raised in Canada. Okay. So my French is really comes from from uh, from Quebec. And I'm bilingual because you you know you we learn French and English both at school. Nice. Um, and there's both like French and English schools here. Um, but if you're born here in Quebec, you're pretty much forced to go in a French school. Um, so yeah, like in Quebec, they they take French pretty seriously. They don't like they're kind of scared of it being erased. So they have like a lot of laws that protects that protects the French language. Of course. Yeah. So. If I had to rank like my my level in each of these languages, my French would be would actually be the strongest one. Then would be English, and then would be Arabic. Holy smokes! So is it the case that at home you do speak 
uh, Arab, Lebanese Arabic. Then uh, at school, at work, it's pretty much French because Quebec strong protection of language. And then in the internet, your English. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, at home, wow. well, with my mostly with my parents uh, and elders, I would speak in Arabic. Uh, That's which, awesome. Yeah, and then with my with my siblings, pretty much French actually, and mm. with all my friends. Well, my friends, it depends uh, where I met them. Some in English, some in French, and at work at the moment, it's in, it's English, uh, but at school studying, I went through the whole uh, French. Uh, I went. I went through with French through the, my whole education system, even mm -hmm. though I had the choice at some point, like for university and college, um, between English and French. I I kept going with French because I was already, I already started with that. So yeah, yeah, that's impressive. So for, French is your first language. That is terrific. One thing about um, you speaking Arabic, Moroccans in general, we tend to understand everyone's Arabic, regardless of where you come from, North Africa, Middle East any type of Arabic we understand. The moment we open our mouths, everybody starts looking at us like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are those? Are those even words? <laughs> you got it exactly right. So like, you tell me something in in, uh, in Moroccan, is, uh, and yeah. I, I understand maybe like 20% even or even less. Um, yes. Yeah, but so yeah, because there's a lot of Arabic dialects. That is um, remarkable. My goodness, I I'm loving this so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have started remarkable. actually by saying, yeah, uh, Labes. Labes, salam, salam, Labes. We do have uh, Alan who comes up in chat and just puts a massive up low uppercase salam all the time. <laughs> but we do have a lot of Middle Easterns that pretty much vibe with the, the Moroccan tidbits that I throw out there. But as far as I'm concerned, I have moved English at the top of the list because it's it's remarkable as a language. Yes, French is useful, but if I weren't playing the game and my wife didn't speak French, I would never use it. I mean, Fair the enough. circumstances in which I would use it are so little and far in between. It's pretty much family and stuff like that. I imagine it's different when you live in a country that is pretty much French. For sure. Is Everywhere that, you go, yeah. people interact with you in French. Um, but I, But even here, like, um, you'll use English in pretty much everything at work. Uh, most of the terms are going to be in English, especially yeah. if you're if especially if your domain of expertise is one that's mostly developed in English, like programming, for example. Um, which is actually what I, what I got into. Mm -hmm. right, we will talk about you as a person. One will give you the. Uh... The chance if if we ever move from this interesting bit that I can't get over here. <laughs> Just one last thing about the English thing. I've watched uh, there was a video that popped in my YouTube feed earlier, which blew my mind about how English is the lingua franca. Yes, but it's getting more and more adopted. I saw these two people in the middle of China arguing in the absolute most Mandarin you could hear. And then one guy got so fed up that he was like, shut the fuck up. And then continued <laughs> speaking in Mandarin. <laughs> so that's how English feels like. It's so strong and potent that you you, you must adopt it whether you want it or not. Right. <laughs> I can't tell you how impressed I am by the fact that I couldn't get where um, the, the Lebanese connection. But it all makes sense right now. And it made me think that French from Quebec... I imagine feels like Darija to everyone that speaks proper Arabic, because I do speak French. Mm -hmm. But when I hear I hear the French uh, Quebec from French, like whoa, twenty percent is good, but the rest is like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about here actually in uh, in Quebec. Uh -huh. There's there's different levels of of French accents, and uh -huh. if you've heard one that you you practically don't understand it's per it's it's on one end of the the spectrum which is oh. pretty extreme actually there's a lot of people that speak french that you'd understand perfectly um really so yeah, yeah so it 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 does get exaggerated oh, sorry <laughs> it does get exaggerated um like uh there's a word i'm looking for it's classic you know accent yeah. the the stereotype is what i meant to say Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, there's I a stereotype yeah, yeah. for French uh, French speakers in Quebec, which is like they don't articulate. Um, they 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 have really weird words. 
<laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's true to some extent, but not everyone speaks like that. <laughs> yeah. See, that and, blows yeah. my mind. That really does blow my mind because I would understand that in a country, if you take an entire country, there would be regional accents, inflections, different in tones and whatever. But if you take one province and you tell me even within it, there are variations of the same Quebecois, French Quebec, that, that really blows my mind. That's right. it, it Actually, mm. if you stick closer to the, the capital cities, um, mm -hmm. Which, like, let's say you stay closer to Montreal, um, then because people, well, the English language is spoken mostly in Montreal within Quebec. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go into there, people's French will will actually be easier to understand. Okay. Whereas if you go further um, out outside of Montreal, where mm -hmm. people tend to not speak English there and they only speak French, and their French. And that's where their French really went to an extreme, ah, where see. there's a lot of differences. Gotcha, gotcha. That is impressive and good piece of trivia for everyone listening. Uh, hello, Golden. Uh, welcome to the chat. Yes, we do look like we're sat next to each other. That's the effect we went with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first things first, uh, before we even get to know a lot, and we've I think I feel like we've already started getting a lot from you before we even pose the question formally. Um, what can you tell us about the background I have chosen today? What is the story of it? Why is it linked to you? Why have I chosen it? What can you tell us about this? Yeah. If you, I actually, before I start, does anyone in the chat know what the background is or what That's it references such a good to? Question. <laughs> Do we know what this is a reference to? What, what, where did we get this from? Oh, Shadow is on fire. Let's go. Yeah, there's people that get stuff like right away. The first answer. First Jesus it was Arabic Christ. and now it's Fudella. <laughs> yes. You guys are good. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So this is Fudella. It's my favorite zone in the game. We don't see it in this background, but usually there's a lot of red. Here there's no coloring, but red is one of my favorite colors. Um, there's different. My, my favorite shade of red is like a dark red. Um, so I like to spend time in the zone if I go AFK. It's really, it's really beautiful if you walk into, into Pandela and go into Fudela specifically. Mm -hmm. The maps are, are gorgeous. Do you agree? It makes perfect sense. It is beautiful. It is mild. I think it's the same reason why I choose Brachmar over Bonta. It's appeasing. To the eye you go in there and the vibe is relaxed isn't it is that is that the feeling you get candles and dark lit mood and stuff like that exactly and <laughs> it's actually funny because when you, if you go into a fight in this zone it's the exact opposite there's like the especially if you have animations on like the the, the foxes there they they throw fireworks they make a lot of sound there's a lot of glyphs everywhere you can't see anything this mm. is so this is uh really funny <laughs> yeah yeah, well, I think it brings us to the natural next question is we've gotten to know a lot about you before we even asked you. But if I were to put it to you uh, to tell us about yourself in as much detail as you can possibly do tell us, who is coverer that likes Fudala, Color Red, that makes content? Who's the person behind all of this package that we're getting to know? Yeah, so... Where can I start? Um, I can start with basically my education, I guess. Um, I've, I have studied um, in software engineering. So I'm a developer and I also do game testing. Um, so that's a bit about my background uh, in terms of uh, studies. Um, I have always liked video games um, and I've I don't know if you were you were going to ask this later, but I got into Dofus. Yes. Pretty. Yeah, I got into Dofus <laughs> uh, pretty early nice. when I was young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So like around 2010, I got into Dofus. Uh, I didn't stay for long, but and I came back later. So we'll get into that. But so I discovered Dofus a, a long time ago, and I got hooked into it, as a lot of people here probably did. Um. And then eventually, I I left it, and then I I started playing like other games like Call of Duty. Um, I'm very good at first person shooter games, and I love those uh, in general. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been playing most of the time, actually. 
um, just FPS games. And I don't post this on my YouTube channel, but this is an, an idea I've been considering, like posting other games than Dofus. Um, I'm not sure yet if it's going to be, if, well, first, if I'm going to do it. And second, if I do it, is it going to be on the same ch channel or if I make mm -hmm. another one? So, yeah, if, I don't know if you have insight on that. Um, not necessarily right away, but it's, uh, it, it is something that we could discuss in the creator channel. Every content creator on the International Pub has access to a special uh, chat where only content creators can see and chat in it. Uh, I'm not entirely sure myself because I'm mono game. I, I've played a lot of Call of Duty in my time, but it's Dofus. Gaming for me has always been Dofus. And you said that you've discovered Dofus. What, can you tell us something about the circumstances of someone that lives in Quebec discovering a very niche French game? I'm always surprised by anyone that isn't from the region or an ex-French colony that knows about it to begin with. Yes, um, you've probably noticed actually on... Actually, I don't know if you've noticed because I've met them um, on Draconeros, but I've met quite a few people from Quebec um, on the game Dofus, and I think it's mostly because they speak French and they've ah. and so they have like that connection. But it's not a popular game here in Quebec. Uh, it's it's like not at all popular. People don't know about it. Um, so how I heard about it is from my cousin a long time a long time ago, mm -hmm. and I don't know where he heard it from, but you know, uh, <laughs> word of mouth. So I, yeah. I was at my cousin's place and I saw him playing it and he was introducing me to the game. And uh, yeah, I I got hooked on it. Is he also in Canada, your cousin? He is. He is. Oh um, my god, the plot thickens. We need to know where he got it from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd assume he got it from his neighbor. Um, yeah. He who which probably played before him, but then we still don't know where the root came from. Uh, uh. <laughs> it might not be a mystery we'll solve today. In any case. But Probably yeah, not. so it's word of mouth. Someone told you about it. You started playing it. You have the advantage of speaking French, so you get access to information instantly. You play in Draconios as well. That's awesome. Yeah, so I do speak French, um, and it is my kind of my first language. Um, but and some people here might ask themselves, like, why do you decide to do content in English? Uh, hmm. uh, yeah, why do you decide to do it in English? Why not in French? Um, and the answer to this is. Pretty much that I, I kind of like the international community. It's It has a very different feel from the French one. Um, yeah, I'm, I agree. <laughs> I, yeah, if you've been in, in French guilds, um, there's kind of this, well, I'm not going to generalize because everyone's different, but there is kind of, um, the, the, the environment is very different. Uh, you, you feel like there's some different attitude to people um, or, or like to how they speak or how yeah how they interact with you it's very different i feel like there's a lot more uh respect in the international community um people yeah i, f I think respect is a good world word mm -hmm. so and it's more relaxed more chill um in the english community and of course it's uh it's a plus to be speaking french i can read the guides and understand them perfectly and I think that makes it a good um, that's a good advantage to have as a content creator because I I can provide more information for the English community. Um, and you've been doing this as well, actually. I've seen mm -hmm. your uh, I've seen your live streams of the the Ankama lives where, like, uh, on a new update, you were trans you would translate stuff. Yeah. And I'm actually quite fascinated of how you do this. And I'd like to have more information, like how do you prepare for that kind of stuff? Because um, I've seen like I've seen the live stream, and I'm like, how does this guy do this? Is it like, does he translate live, or does he watch it first, and then he takes some notes so he knows what's going to be in the live stream, and then like he so he's ready to present it in English? How do you do that? I have never answered this question, and. Uh... If you want to get to it, yes, I will happily do that. But just before that, I wanted to go back to something that you've mentioned that really does did strike a chord. And I wanted to add more to it just so people can get a fuller experience because it's not something most people know about. 
if you play in the international community and you only speak English, you don't know what the vibe is like on a French server. You've not necessarily ever traded with anyone in French. You don't know what the habits are, the way they speak, how they communicate and things like that. And I myself uh, have a sort of hate-love relationship with France. I know them so well because of our past, colonial past. Um, I like their music. But I hate that I like their music. I want to visit it, but dislike that they're so wealthy and well and advanced, knowing how they got to where they've got. It's a hate-love relationship. And that translates to me not liking being in a French server. And that's how I played in an English server for the first time. Despite not being good in English at, at all. That's how I selected Rucho and started playing with the international community. And if anyone shares this experience of knowing how the two sides are, the international community is way better. It's a breeze compared to what you get on a French server. And I think it's a numbers game. If you have a French game, then there's a lot more French people. So the pool is much wider. So you get a lot of pretty much everything. Whereas if you have an international community, it's more select the number. The sample is smaller. So you get less of the bad stuff around going on. <laughs> so it makes sense. But back to the other thing that you've mentioned about uh, trying to help and throw myself out there by translating the thing. It is not something I have ever prepared for. In fact, I still remember the first time I was going to do it. I just posed the question on Reddit and I said, guys, there's a and I come alive. I've got the afternoon free. Should we live translate? I didn't even know I was going to do it live. I thought I was going to pose, translate. So I just threw myself out there. And I've mentioned this to Wi-Fi. I was like, I'm going to stream. Say, oh, we don't usually stream now. What is this about? I said, there's a live. I want to live translate it. And she's like, are you sure? You Have you ever done that? I said, no, I don't know how it works. So the, the way I've approached it is I'm going to bump up the volume in my ears so that I don't hear myself. I only hear them even when I speak. So I'm getting the French live feed in my ears. And anything that comes out of my mouth will be approximating of that. But then I realized I can do it live without preparation. As I'm hearing, I can live translate it and sort of anticipate using the sentence structure they're using. I can see where it's going and then choose the right sentence structure in English to anticipate for that. And for those of you who are very advanced in French and English, we'll see that sometimes I get it wrong. <laughs> I'll start a sentence and then just put a dot right in the middle and start again <laughs> because I miscalculated the trajectory of that sentence and ever since there it has been so much of a hit I've enjoyed it and I just kept doing it and I've promised everyone that whenever there's a proper and camera live that people are interested in I'll just do it myself regardless one thing I would say about it try it if you've never done that give it a try it's an interesting dynamic between brain and mouth it's something that really takes you off your comfort zone it's, and I it's say that crazy. because I've, I've never done it and I've tried it and it worked out. It might not work out, but it's interesting as an experience generally. It's actually, it's very impressive. Like, I have to give you credit there. You, like, it's, it is a skill. Um, it's, and it's, I mean, it, it's not easier said than done, if I said it right. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's complicated. I speak both French and English. And like having to process what's being said and saying it at the same time <laughs> in another language is crazy to me. Like, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you have my respects for that. Thank you um, very much. I'll, if I didn't do it before speaking with anyone about it, I might have never tried it because I would have had this a thought. Yeah, that sounds complicated. It's something that people get paid for at the UN and whatever. What? Why is it that I should be able to do it? But this is why I love content creation. And like having a job with a fixed description, you do this on repeat, it pushes your boundary. You try new things, you see things, you put yourself in situations that you don't know how you're going to, to handle. And then you see what comes out of them, really. Maybe it's a good time to segue into content creation. Do you think, Cover? I think it's good. I'd add um, that we've actually, we, we, we both have translated li uh, li live stream or update content before um, to to English. You do it more in a uh, like a presentation, uh, an oral presentation way. I do it yeah. more on on paper. So like I would type everything. I'd make like a concise summary. So we have different different approaches, and I think this is good. It covers really 
the different ways people like to learn about an update. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. So it's, this is really good. If you've seen the poster I have made on uh, Malt Info on the announcement, I've used, I, I put a lot of thought into the way I announce a conversation because I think it sets the tone for what I think before going into it. And what I thought is a gentleman with opposite energy to yours truly. And that's a poignant sentence because as you've said, when you've tagged along one of the live streams where I'm doing it live, hearing and then live transcribing, translating it, I've tagged into the same one you've done later that day where you've played it and the vibe was calm. You were listening to it. You'd press pause, you'd process it and then you type it down. And I thought, where does he get the patience to do this? It blew my mind. It literally, I felt uncomfortable at the prospect of doing that. Like I couldn't possibly fathom that level of composure and slowing things down and processing it and just putting it into it. I'm like, ain't nobody got time for that. How did he do it? That's actually one of my concerns. It's one of my concerns because um, on one on one side, I'm kind of afraid that people get bored of this because it does take a lot of time and not everyone is as patient as me when going mm -hmm. through that. I really like to take my time, read everything that's in an update and and summarize things to make it yeah. easily readable by people without yeah, so without having the clutter of information um, and without having to use like a translator where every, every word is translated bad because you know, um, yeah. there, there's specific words to, to, for words to the office. Yeah. And yeah, so this is one of my concerns. Um, but, but then again, sometimes when, I, when I'm about to, to release a video or stream, I, I tend to think that maybe I shouldn't care too much about what people think and just do my thing. Uh, so yeah, so I'm more comfortable that way. That is brilliant. Um... If you don't mind me picking you up on just that one bit right there, um, speaking with you and hearing you speak, you are yourself and it feels like you're not creating a persona that is calm for those lives. Um, what can you tell us about you as a person generally? Have you always been uh, sort of calm and composed? Is this your type? Is this how you have always been? Or do you have bursts of energy in some sort of circumstances? Do we ever see a wild coverer in some circumstances? <laughs> um, this is no. So this is pretty much how I've always been. <laughs> I've always been calm and mm -hmm. always think before speaking, which is mm -hmm. probably be why I speak kind of slowly. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't like to. I actually I regret a lot when I I say things which, like I didn't. Uh, there, there's a lot of things I say and I regret saying them because I could have said it in a better way. So I think a lot before speaking. This is the mm -hmm. kind of person I am. Um, yeah. But where you'd see me with a lot of energy is actually um, in real life. Because if I do sports, for example, I like to mm -hmm. rollerblade. I like to run. Um, so this is, I, I have an energetic side, really. Um, and you don't really see this on the internet. Yes. <laughs> I, and there's one idea of, I've had, which is, like doing push-ups on stream for everything that happens, every <laughs> every specific event that happens in game. Let's say my character dies, I have to do like a, a specific a specific that. amount of push-ups, <laughs> and that would actually force me to stay fit, you know. And uh, I think it would be a little funny. So this is an idea I've had for a future. Feel free to to steal it if you want to. I think it's good for for anyone who wants to get fit. I couldn't. For all the rubbish that I do and all the numbers of deaths that I die in the game, I'd be jacked more than The Rock by the end of the first stream. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> There's a question for you. Which one can bench the most? Because you're more athletic. I've had a child two years ago and I've not seen the inside of a gym. Congratulations. So I, I suspect, thank you very much, I suspect you're more athletic and keeping up with health stuff more than I would be. Uh, maybe um, mm. I've I've actually quit the gym not long ago. Um, oh. Yeah, but I I still I still run. I still mm. do push-ups quite often every day. I in the winter because we have a big winter here in Canada. Um, oh, yes, I go snowboarding, which is a lot of fun. Ooh, that's impressive. Yeah, it's crazy. Once like there is this debate about ski versus snowboard. Um, yeah, <laughs> and I'm definitely on the snowboard team. Okay, okay. 
I don't know enough about the two to sort of take side or maybe tease you about the other side of it as well. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's always things like that. Even in the UK, there's uh, even in food, the scones. You know the scones, the little bready yeah. sort yeah. of thing. They slice them in half and they have to put two things: jam and cream. And there is a national debate, and it's possibly tells a lot about you as a person which one you put <laughs> first. <laughs> It's That's one funny. of the peculiarities, yeah. Yeah, I but wanted uh, to ask yeah. you. Go, go well, on, go on. Yeah, I was just gonna add, like, to to answer the question specifically, who can bench the most? Mm. Uh, I'd say it's probably you, actually, because the, my body type is pretty. It's pretty slim. I have a. I have a kind of difficulty building muscles. You know, not everyone has mm. the same body type. Um, I have a, a difficulty losing weight and gaining weight, so mm -hmm. I. I'd say I'm not that strong. Uh, you could probably bench a lot more. Maybe we'll have to put it to the set. If you are coming to the Ankama Live, uh, no, not the Ankama Live, what is it called? The Ankama Convention in August and slash 1st of September. We could find the gym and do a special stream for Georgie Boy. <laughs> oh, I'd probably maybe that. if you're there as well. <laughs> if, you, if you buy me the ticket, I'll fly. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that is remarkable. That is awesome. Winters and stuff like that. I can't possibly imagine the Canadian winters. It's just baffling. But uh, going back to the content creator, and creator thing, uh, you've told us about how you started playing the game, how you've discovered it. But this is something that always surprises me is that it's not necessarily linked in my head that if you play a game and enjoy it, that you will film yourself playing it or make a guide or spend hours of unpaid labor to make something and put it out there. You put in a part of you that people can comment on i mean it's baff it's terrifying someone can put a negative comment and despite it being the internet it can hurt how did you make this leap from i enjoy playing this silly niche game that not many people know about to let's do it in english and make content and push it out there sure um i'd say so i i went pretty far into the game um i would probably say i have a phd in dofus you know about by how much <laughs> i've played it i have so many hours <laughs> into it um <laughs> And, and that's actually on a short uh, amount of time because I, d I did say I started a long time ago, but mm -hmm. I left it for a lot of years and I came back in 2019. So right now it's only been five years since I've actually played it um, mm -hmm. as a normal player. Back in the days, I would just like run around and, you know, hit a bunch of cracklers and that's it. Um, <laughs> like all of us at that age, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, but nowadays, like I went through the whole game. I'm, I'm a completionist. So mm -hmm. I tried to have the maximum achievement points. And I also played Dracon Euros. So having a single account, having a single character, uh, really makes you feel like the character is your identity. So you you want to get, well, I, I got to the point where, uh, as you guys may know, I'm I'm a Feka main. So I played on, Fe uh, on Feka on Dracon Euros for, from level 1 to 200. I really mastered the class. Um, I've learned everything about it. Mm, and then I tr I I started trying to get all the achievements in the game. Oh, yes, and I'm wow. I didn't get there yet because I'm stuck on breeding. I hate breeding. <laughs> I know a lot of people love breeding. <laughs> uh, what do you think about breeding? <laughs> I think it's a remarkable. I think generally it has I've encountered it while doing my first quest. I started the crow, started playing. I can hear people in this chat saying, "What is a crow?" I can hear it. Shell shock. <laughs> Uh, I started doing the first quests and, you know, you do your emerald and then you have to do some breathing. And I thought it was a remarkable way to introduce you to various aspects of the game, like pillars, dreams when you're doing Volbis, breathing when you're doing this, idols when you're doing Turk, things like that. I found it interesting, but I think it could do with a little tweak so that everybody can enjoy doing it. I don't find it problematic. I can do it. Uh, it appeals to me in uh, the sense the the same way dreams appeal to me it's doing something tedious for long periods of time for a big ass payout one day like when i start with two and then i end up with a thousand and then i can turn them into scrolls and i can put them in a chest and then i can see the scroll numbers build up and then i can sell them i can donate them i can make special events i can give away can help people that are starting i find it remarkable uh, as an enabler to make karmas and do things in the game but it could do with a little tweak because it's so mindless that you have to have an inside motivator otherwise most people just hate yeah. it 
I think the reason um, there's a difference between farming dreams and farming uh, breeding is because in dreams, let's say you do a few rooms at floor 300, you can get some nice boxes, sell them, mm -hmm. and you still get a decent amount of money. You didn't spend that much time. But with breeding, you actually, it's another, a complete other aspect of the game with another mechanic where you have to understand how breeding works. And I actually yes. made, um, this was a not intentional, guide. by the way, but I did make a <laughs> breeding guide. If you guys yes. want to want to watch it, it's only five minutes and it's a good beginner guide to breeding. Doesn't go too too much in depth, but I made it because um, I thought there was no beginner, well, no good beginner guide in English um, and probably even in French um, about this subject. And so I used all the tips that I, that I knew. You know how I gather information? I ask people in game. I take notes. Oh, um, please, and please I... don't, don't, don't tell us. Don't tell us because it's a topic I want to get into because okay. I, I make content and I see the amount of research and the strength behind a video and I want to know your full process not just in passing I want it to be okay a topic I'll stay on topic just... I'll stay on topic so basically <laughs> no it's fine it's fine it's the spirit of what we're doing right now we're meandering yes. our way carry on so the, the reason a lot of people dislike breeding is because you don't get the result right away um you you have to do breeding and then wait several hours especially if you're doing like sea mules or rhine needles you have to wait so many hours so like yeah. so so many days and yeah. Like you don't get the result right away. I think if they made, like, uh, if they made the the process of having uh, ba baby mounts like really fast, a lot more people would be breeding. So, so someone could say, "Oh, that would destroy the economy." Um, but they can they can find a solution for that. But I think they really want to make it like tedious and take a long time because it's an MMO after all. Yes. Um, but yeah, so so going back to, to to me, <laughs> the going back to me in my content creation. Um, mm -hmm. So I got stuck on breeding for achievements, but I really went through the most achievements I could get um, on my FECA. And then I went through a phase where I really wanted to try a lot of other classes, but I didn't want to buy cl a, class ch a class change potion because I <laughs> love my FECA. I wanted to keep yeah. my FECA. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I love the fact uh, of playing on Mono account because mm. I, 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 the fact of having multiple windows open and having to, to go through them all, it's, it's, to me, it's very tedious. Yeah. And I just wanted one character. So, so I made a lot of other characters on my mono account server, mm -hmm. uh, a mono account, account. And so to the extent where I was enjoying every class so much, that I kept making more classes until now I have all 19 classes on that same account, wow. on that same server. And yeah. I even made another additional FECA because I like FECA. So, yeah. So what, now, can, what, what can you tell us about the FECA first? Because you've mentioned it and it's your main account. And there's also a question that I have been asked a lot since I made the poster is what is the name all about coverer and why is Fekka his main account? Why does he care a lot about that class? Okay, there's a lot to say actually. Um, <laughs> Let's go. Before I go into that, let me just finish yeah. my my sure, my sure, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. my thought go process. On. So, <laughs> so I made like every character, and then basically what I was trying to do because I love the game, I was trying to find a way to keep enjoying the game. So every time I made a new class, I was enjoying it. I was finding something different about the game. I was spicing it up a little bit. And then eventually I ran out of things to do. Like I completed all the main quests on my FECA. I did like almost every dungeon achievement or, or all of them actually. Um, and so I was going to the point where I had nothing, pretty much nothing to do. I scrolled all my characters on my account to, to, to like from zero to a hundred uh, by doing like a bunch of bounties. I, wow. yeah, so, so at that point I was like, you know what? I have so much experience in the game. Um, I like playing it. Why not create a YouTube channel where I could set myself more challenges um, so I still have something to do uh, in the game, still be entertained, and at the same time, I can help other people in the community by sharing um, tips and tricks, sharing tutorials, guides, um, and that's because I have a lot of information. I've spent all these years gathering that information. Why not share yeah. it and make it beneficial for people? So this, is, so this both makes it entertaining for me and useful for other people. That's remarkable. Uh, I'd like to remind the chat 
Does anybody know what the first video that cover posted? It's unusual and it does corroborate his story. He was so bored and so knowledgeable at the same time that his first video was, does anybody know <laughs> the madness he started with? <laughs> Let's see if anybody picks it up. I can hear people furiously type in your YouTube channel and scrolling down. <laughs> All this stuff. You're going to get it on the first try. That's That's the kind yeah. of chat you have. Yeah, but do tell us about that uh, first video you've made. Should what I? Was should it I say intended it? to achieve? Yeah, yeah, go. Yeah, so the first video, I believe I'm not on my channel right now, but I believe it's um, a dungeon achievement, a specific dungeon achievement on yes. against not the eternal conflict. Yes, eternal conflict. Yes, <laughs> yes. Eternal conflict. First score two hundred. <laughs> Back when idols were still in. Jesus Christ. So it's yeah. yeah, so it's first and score two hundred on the eternal conflict. Right now the eternal conflict works a bit differently. They change the mechanic. Mm -hmm. Um but you really I think uh, this was with the trap network with a SRAM, was it? Yep. Ba -ba -ba -ba. One shot. Yeah. So I, I I find the concept pretty cool of like having a trap network with a SRAM and just mm -hmm. volleying the boss, throwing it in, and like it's exactly. it's so satisfying to see it like disappear <laughs> in a few seconds. Yeah. This is really cool. <laughs> All um, the threat. Why? Yeah. And I I know I posted two two videos about that. Um mm. I believe the first one was right after the panda got nerfed. Panda got a big nerf where the amount of times they could carry an entity got reduced, their tanking ability got reduced as well. And so mm. I feel like a lot of people um, got not depressed, but they they became sad because a lot of people like to ride the meta, like to have something really strong in their composition, especially Panda. It's kind of the mm. core of your team if mm -hmm. uh, you're going for meta plays. Um, and a lot of people like got a bit sad after the the, the Panda nerf. So yeah. so when I released this, uh, I thought. Like people would maybe I could cheer people up, you know. Like Panda is not Panda is not done. You can still make it work. <laughs> yeah. So, and especially in an end game dungeon like the Eternal yeah. Conflicts. Oof. Doesn't and, get yeah. any more end game than that. Huh? Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, you notice that a lot of people watching Dofus content are are pretty far into uh, into Dofus. They they have like they're at the end game as well. Not all of them. But so I, I cater to that to some extent. I have other videos where, um, you know, there's solotages or hard, difficult dungeons like Four Horsemen, the, the Iliocalypse Storm. Um, and it gets a lot of views. There's a lot of people that like to see hardcore stuff. 100%. This, we got an insight recently during the Ankama Live where they've announced expeditions. This is for anyone making content. Um, They've said that the internal stats reveal that about 85% of the player base is level 160 to 200. So pretty much if you're making a video not about anything 160 plus, you're catering to the minority of the player base. It's no longer the case that most people are starting in the beginning of the curve. It's That's how mature a game it is generally, the office right now. That's a that's, very interesting stat and... Mm. Um, I I like from a personal experience. I'd say, um, once I got to two hundred, that's where the game start. Like I'd say, this is where the game starts because yeah. there's so much content after level two hundred, and 100%. once you get to two hundred, you feel like everything that was before that was kind of a chore. You don't want to redo that. Um, yes. And I know, like people disagree because a lot of people like the grind on a new server or Temporis, and this is completely another experience. I'd say. But mm. let's say you're already established on a server, you get mm. to 200 for the first time, yeah. You and then you start discovering like, then you you get enough commas to start making new builds. You exactly. you get yeah. you get yeah you get f far into the game that you want to try introducing like new characters to your composition uh, mm. and stuff like that. You want to try new new things. There's a lot of dungeons you haven't ran. I think most dungeons are from 190 to 200. 200, yeah. This is it really where the, the new the content is being against leeching created. really hard because the most desirable content and the most challenging one is after you reach 200. So 
no wonder people want to skip the early phase by just paying someone to leech them need exactly. us or whatever yeah it makes sense uh, would you be able to go back on the question about your name because i see it has become a meme in your comment section the er at the end they will use <laughs> things like uh coverer killerer of uh, <laughs> eternalerer <laughs> yeah well, what can you tell us about how you came up with your name generally so how i came up with the name is basically actually be, be, be okay to get into that i have to go before that when I started Dofus in 2019, um, and how I, sh I actually came across it in 2019 is I was browsing Steam and, and I saw Dofus was on Steam and I was like, wait, what? what? This game is still alive? I thought it was dead. So, uh -huh. so, so this is where I installed it just for fun, just to see where the game went uh, after uh -huh. all these years. And then I started playing it. And this was obviously Dofus 2.0. What I knew yeah. in my head was 1.29. Yeah. And so everything was different. Um, like what I remembered the most from 1.29 was the location of the, of some specific dungeons, like the blob dungeon. Mm -hmm. I, I remember it like at the left of, uh, a machna kind of like where there's the Rocky road zap. Yeah. I remember it over there. 42. <laughs> you know, the look, the look, the, the exact zap. location, the, just the, zap, um, the nearest one. <laughs> yeah. So like, I remember the, the, the blob dungeon being over there. And I, mm. what I remember the most is doing like leeches through the blob dungeon with my eye up back in the day. So, oh, wow. so I would just camp this dungeon, do some leeches. Uh, and then when I came to 2.0, I was like, oh, this is so different. This is so fun. There's so much things to explore. There's achievements. There's there's so many new things. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to start playing this. This is fun. And then I, I really didn't expect to, to go back to Dofus, but I started playing it again. And yeah. uh, and so why this? Okay. So and then when I started this um, playing in 2.0, they put me in Takasha right away. So I, I didn't go through character uh, server selection. Um, is that because my, your IP is not from France? Ergo, send them. Maybe uh, the default mm. settings were basically they threw me inside Talkasha right away at class selection. So I didn't see the servers. For me, it's just like okay, I got into the game. Let's start playing. And right. And I never realized there's like there was server selection until I got I got to two hundred <laughs> and above. So so and this is crazy because I was playing on a single <laughs> character. I was playing a croc. Um, wow. And then I got to 200 <laughs> and I was wondering why is there no one that can help me with my quest? Like no one no one wants to do ivory, no one wants to do ebony. I was stuck. And ah, then some people geez. were saying, "Oh, you should go to mono account server." I was like, "What? What? Mm. What's mono account?" And then Oof. I eventually figured it out and then I saw uh the Elysio server, which currently doesn't exist, but back in the back then in 2019 it was there. Uh, it was open for like 2 years. I think it started in 2017. But so I went on Elysial and I was like, okay, finally, let's, okay, let's start from scratch. Uh, this is not fun, but I'm going to have to do this again. Let's start from scratch. I'll pick a class that I never kind of experienced, never saw on Talkasha. I don't know if it's because most people were playing in their own little bubble. Um, yes. And then the, the, the people that were playing Mono on Talkasha were not mm. playing Fekka. So for me, Fekka was like the class that oh. I've never seen um, in 2.0. And I and because it's a mono account server, I was like, okay, people want some like some support in their team. They want I want to pick a class that I can I help see. people. I want to pick a class that people will want to to bring in their dungeon. Yeah. yeah. And I want to I don't want to help people. I don't want to play this this crowd that just does a ton of damage and <laughs> play play plays on his own in in his little corner. So I went with Fekka, yeah. and I actually don't remember too much how I. Well, I mean, cover is literally linked to Fekka because I cover people, you know? I, I protect wow. them. I shield them. So <laughs> so it's a pretty basic name uh, for, yeah. for Fekka, but then it's, it's stuck. <laughs> and all my characters afterwards have some kind of cov in them, just to yes. reference my first character. That's um, amazing. That's yeah. a, that's a mystery solved chat. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, I still have to Nobody answer. Nobody asks me that anymore. I might, I might make a YouTube short so I can stop being asked about that. <laughs> I actually don't know what is the story behind single malt. You tell me. Oh, I've made an actual video about it. So there was a time where I, well, here's how I started playing and we'll take a break after this and then return just because I'm conscious that we've reached the hour. 
So the story goes as such, I've made a video about an entire video about how I picked my color and the names of my characters. So I've played Dofus back in the day, 2006, 2007 at school, everybody plays it. I'd go to Cyber Cafe, I had my little cry, pounded the cracklers and chafers and incarnum and whatever, whatever. And then I stopped playing it after I was 16. It got out of hand. I got an obsessive personality when I set myself a goal. Everything else becomes secondary. So eating food, it got really bad when uh, over a summer I was 16 and family were traveling around and they were like, right, let's go. And I was like, look, I'm not going. I'm going to be farming the Koalax <laughs> with this international friend of mine who was from Finland. We're just going gamer. to level this Echo Flip. I wanted to get to level 200. We're doing this. And they got so pissed off that they cut my internet access. They removed PC from my room. And I didn't really have an opportunity to play because life gets in the way. You go study abroad and stuff like that. I wasn't stable until I bought my own house. And not very long after buying my own house, I had a little child. My daughter was born. And I took six months off to look after her initially. I shared maternity leave with my wife. And so she would do the days because I'm naturally nocturnal. I'd fire up, I'd be up all night and then hand her over the baby in the morning and she would do her shift. And then at night, babies, if you know anything about them, they sleep most of the time. They wake up, you change them, they, you feed them and then they sleep. So I had her on me and I was in front of a computer. What do I do? Dofus. So I fire it up. And then I was in my office with the little one here. What do I sell? What, what name do I give these characters i had to find a theme so i look around and i could do that with the camera but i don't know if it will show it very well but i do have a whiskey cabinet to my left because i live in the uk i've adopted the culture i love scotland and their culture of whiskey so i've adopted that it's part of my culture now moving forward in life i have a dedicated whiskey cabinet with single malt scotch whiskies so scotland has its own tradition where they have one type of grain that they make the whiskey from and it has to come from scotland and they use the soil to give it the taste and flavor and things like that so that's on my left that's a passion of mine no, and on crazy. the right i had books about finance because i work in finance and it's pretty much the only thing i'm interested in outside of gaming and sports <laughs> so i had books about finance and whiskey on my left side so i picked single malt as it's present in every single one of my bottles when i look left it's the the the, the... So that's how I selected. It's not as glamorous as I'm going to shield everyone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's funny actually because because I'm a Muslim, so I, I don't drink I don't drink beer, I don't drink alcohol. Yeah. So this is like complete opposite. Like you love this, I've never <laughs> yeah. tried it. Yeah. Um, but this is a very interesting fact. Yeah. I I mean, for the first 21, 22 years of my life, I've not had a single drop of alcohol. But the moment I left the country, I sort of had a um, I did study philosophy, I did the PPE degree, uh, philosophy, politics and economics to marry my interests all together in one thing. And it's a typically British thing. And I've learned about all these philosophers and Nietzsche and what have you. And one of them mentioned uh, an Italian chap mentions the tabula rasa, the uh, so you remove everything from the table and you start fresh as part of casting doubt on things and setting your mind firmly on reality. So come into your own mind. And I really like this concept. So I've started to ask questions about everything that I took for granted from my past, from my background. Just because I was born in a Muslim country in Morocco does not mean I had access to the general truth in life. Let's see what other people think about. So I asked, gosh, what do you like alcohol? What do you like this? What do you like that? And I've tried pretty much everything and retained very few things that were of interest. But single malt scotch whiskey is something that will stay with me for life. Because if you think about it, every culture has the equivalent of whiskey is water of life in Gaelic. In Morocco, we have something that is called ma'al hayat, mahia. It's the local drink that you make from the spirits of the things that you have around you. Vodka, they took the most abundant thing, potatoes. Let's turn it into a, let's get something out of it that we can use. And that's how it came about. That was just a bigger side. That's very interesting. Actually, connection. I have yeah. like zero knowledge, knowledge of anything alcohol related. So, every, yeah. so what you're saying right now is really interesting to me. 
yeah i mean that, that's my personal experience you could try and think this is dreadful it's not very good for health and it certainly is yeah. not great in big quantities for people who do not know how to control themselves it can cause problems after all it's poison you poison yourself just like we do yeah. with spices it's controlled danger you know this is burning but it's not gonna take your tongue off so we enjoy dancing with the danger in that yeah it is it is a drug after all i guess yeah um yeah is it's poison I'm, yeah i'm surprised it's legal from. I'm surprised it's legal. <laughs> yes. it, like in my eyes, it does a lot more, a lot more bad to the world than good. But... Yes, but very possibly, yeah. But at least the culture of the UK. We've mentioned the weather earlier because of how awful and dreadful it is all year round. At least I, I hope or I think that in Canada you get beautiful summers. Here it's raining. I could turn my camera right now and show you rain in the middle of July. <laughs> They have a culture of going to pubs, so indoors where it's not wet, and then the mm -hmm. socializing and the social lubricant to a shy society is alcohol because it reduces the inhibition. And you're more yourself, you make mistakes, you don't think as much about what you're gonna say, you don't bring context before every sentence, you don't have you don't have an emphasis on being correct and stuff. So you let loose and it helps. It's a social lubricant. I understand it, but in moderation. Enough. Um, someone in Dirsi on the comments said, uh, uh. there's something more addictive than dofus. <laughs> <laughs> I was dofus yeah. legal. <laughs> yeah, dofus should be legal. It's addictive. But yeah, mm. if, you're, if you're, for, for people watching this, if, if you're playing too much dofus and it's being negative for any aspect of your life, try to take a break. Um, it's really, because I think a lot of people uh, including me, have played a bit too much of Dofus where it can be negative for in some aspects of your life. Uh, trust me, take a break. It'll do some good. Um, yeah, take a break. That's what I'd say. Um, back in the day... Message. Yeah, back in the day, actually, uh, towards 2010, let's, uh, I think, when I started playing Dofus for the first time, I stayed hooked on it for so long, and my brother was actually playing it as well, and he stayed hooked on it, and he realized this before me. And he actually de deleted his whole account because of wow. this. And on top of this, he deleted my my account without my permission. Oh, and I was so no. mad at this. Yeah. But looking back, like, mm. I, like I, I still think he did something that's really mean. But mm. I, I respect the fact that he tried, he tried to save me from like an addiction mm. that could be potentially bad for me. So if you're not good mm. at, if you're not good at man managing your time, managing yourself, and everything you have going in life, then maybe some exterior source is a good thing to have. A hundred percent. That's a sublime message cover. Thank you very much for that. You did take me back to the anecdote I said earlier about being uh, 16. And it got to the point where I didn't want to spend time with family. The only thing I wanted to do is play. They had to intervene by cutting my access to the internet and PC because it got out of hand. So if you ever feel like you have that kind of relationship with anything, it could be the game, it could be a person, it could be alcohol, it could be anything in life, take a step back or at least allow people who want to help to do so. And I think we should pose on that very sublime message. Thank you for that again, Coverer. We'll take a five minute break. Is that good enough? That's fine. Yeah. Should we do five? We'll do five minutes break. And we shall return with more questions with our spectacular guest today, Coverer. And we'll go over many, many, many things like his relationship with spreadsheets, more about some of the things that he has realized in the game, some of the guides that you can find on the International Pub. We'll talk about the Discord as well, how we met and how I've invited him to the Discord. And some more things that you guys are used to as part of the podcast that usually follow the serious questions. <laughs> Right. How are you finding it so far, Coverer? Going well. I like uh, I like uh, this discussion. I feel like there's not enough um, discussions about Dofus and just people talking in general how they feel, um, like being vocal about uh, different aspects of the game. I really appreciate the podcasts you d you do. Um, yeah, they're really nice, and no one else does that. I feel. Hmm. I've recently discovered um, that Hugo Laz has done something like that. When I started, I did not know this existed. So I thought I was doing something unprecedented. But then I realized that Hugo Laz, the legend that has also joined 
the international pub recently, has been doing this with none other than Volkasaurus and Frankie and some of the biggest names in terms of solo and stuff and encyclopedic knowledge of the game. People who know a lot about the AI and stuff like that. And they've been discussing the direction of the game and things like that. And I'm pleasantly surprised to see that it has been done in the past. I nice. hope I'll, to I'll see more of it at least. Yeah, remarkable thing. I have tried to keep it as unstructured as possible. This is a new thing. So I really hope chat is having a good time and our listeners in the future are finding it easy to follow and enjoyable still and nonetheless. I respect that. Thank you, single malt. And when I was the word. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much for that. So um, I just remember that I failed to ask you the signature question of this podcast. And we know that you're main FECA because you like to be super useful, help others. We know how you selected the name. But let's say I log into cover right now, your main account, and I double yeah. press the... Oh, sorry, I think the music is a bit too loud. And I double click the recall potion. Where is it taking me and why have you selected that one in particular? Uh, you know, that's a... Pretty interesting question because I, I almost never use recall potions. I probably <laughs> <What>? should, <laughs> but this my... is the first one chat. <laughs> yeah, I actually don't use potions a lot. I just, I just like use zaps. And if I'm stuck and I I have to use a potion, it's I I probably have one in my inventory somewhere. I just take whatever. But um, it's probably gonna take you to Pandala, uh, mm. which is like the zap I uh, I marked as favorite. Um, and that's obviously you probably know the answers because it's closer to few few dollar. But sometimes when I know I'm gonna die a lot, um, and like I don't want to use a lot of energy food, yeah, um, because I don't want to waste my commas. I set the the zap to the closest area where I'm doing yeah. a certain quest fight or the dungeon, so that I respawn there and I can just or like if there's a phoenix nearby, uh. Yeah, so, but like in general, it will be in Pandala. Awesome, awesome. So the Pandala's up. That is brilliant. Uh, a few people have, uh, I think it was just Golden Spirit who has mentioned that it's his zap as well for yeah. a different reason. Not the proximity to his favorite appeasing area, but because of the music. I know not many people play with sound, but I've started doing that. And every area has its own theme to it. it. Does. And Pandala is fantastic so appeasing and i like i like the vibe there i i want to know actually about your you i i throw the question back to you where's your <laughs> favorite uh zap oh uh, it's it's a diff it's a difficult one because i've had a few favorites over time um the first one when i just started the game again was minus two zero so the village zap because it's close to the cano jedo and i remember spending a lot of time in the map between the cano jedo and the zap so i can see uh rambo pl doing pvp and smacking those people and the big wings and living vicariously through all these big achievers and then when i returned back to the game i used that as the first one and then when I did my ivory, I discovered, uh, not ivory, the emerald, breeding. And that's when I came across and made friends with Sevi, who used to use the breeder zap. And I went there and I was like, this is the absolute most perfectly located zap in the whole game. It's so central. Yes. And you can just walk pretty much everywhere and you've got a bank nearby and you've got all these markets one map away. And I've never deviated from it. I see. Oh, hello, Chess. <laughs> Chess is ah. making an appearance again. <laughs> oh, nice. This is another thing I wanted to mention to you, Cover, that I've changed my mind on after scrutiny. The thing we've talked about earlier. Uh, the Spinoza's uh, Tabula Raza's dogs. Pretty much the whole country has a negative attitude towards them. But when I came here, it has softened with contact with um, the British people and their love for dogs. I appreciated it so much that I've got myself one of these puppies. That's nice. It's so cute. Yeah. I have a, I have a cat. Way. I'm actually kind of a cat person. Oh, nice. Yeah. She's pretty that shy. Maybe so one, that maybe maybe one I, to yeah. share with us on the pet channel, if you didn't know we had one. Yeah, I on could. I could. Nice, 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 nice. I suppose yeah. the next thing I wanted to really get into and give you the opportunity to give us more insight into how it came to be, why you did it, how you did it, or your signature 
uh, guides, the one photo that pucks so much of a punch that I have all of them lined up on the Discord in the tool section. So the states, uh, the movement in, uh, what is it called, subsophokia. How do you come up with these ideas and then how do you carry them out to be the brilliant guides that they are? Yeah, uh, you could pull it up right now if you want actually to show the people. But the, the states guide, actually, most of my guides come from the fact that I'm looking for information during my gameplay and I can't find it or it's difficult to go reach. So I make guides depending on my needs. Um, so if I struggle with something, uh, see, there's so many guys, there's so many states in the game, like there's gravity, heavy, rooted, unmovable, unshakable, and they yes. all do something completely different. Um, yes. and sometimes it's just a small, a slight variation of another state and it can get really confusing during your fight. And that can cause you to do a lot of mistakes during your fight, um, even fail an achievement. And on Mono account, that can be frustrating for other people that are in your fight, in your team, because you don't play alone. Um, so having a, a, a guide like this open on the side is so useful. Um, and I couldn't find any other one. Even like, there's no one that did this for French nor English community. So yes. I, I, yeah. So I told myself, okay, I'll take the task I'll of do doing it for this. both. <laughs> yeah. And wow. I'm in general, I'd say I'm a good summarizer. I'm a um. Uh, like uh, and I like to summarize things as well, mm -hmm. uh, so it's also clearer for me. Um, so yeah, this is how I made the the mobility states guide. Um, I also made the like I made one in French and in English, so yes. to help like everyone, not only uh, the international community. Yes. Um, and We've then got there's both other guides up in the tools channel. Yeah. So and then there's other charts like this one, which is a Sofokia exploration one. Let me put um, it up as well. Yeah, it's coming up. Um, this one, it's a bit more complicated because this is, uh, well, when I make a guide, you, um, there's like so much information that you could put on a guide and I have to decide what I want to put there, what I don't want to put there, like what's going to be useful for most people. Um, and again, there, there, I think there are some charts for, uh, the abyss exploration, like the abyss map, but Either they don't have all the information in a single chart, or it's going to be in French only, and you have to translate it somehow. Or like maybe some people did uh, some kind of guide, but they didn't share it with anyone. They only have it on the side for for them. So yeah. So having like a single chart for this that explains everything, and this chart actually has more information that like most people would not know. Like if you look at number one, two, and three, these doors. Yes. So many people don't know about them. There's a door yeah. that brings you from the top floor to the bottom floor. And what? I noticed, yeah, and I noticed that a lot of people don't notice when I was doing bounties. So the three bounties that you see at the bottom, Bob de yeah. Red, Homer Medallion, Takomako. Yep, um, yep, yep. So like I, I try to do bounties on every single one of my characters. And when I do this, because I'm in mono account, I'm trying to find people to join my group. And yeah. a lot of people, they're like, they, they keep asking, oh. like, okay, what item do I need? <laughs> oh, uh, wow. And then other people, they would reply. They would say, oh, you need propulsion accelerator and anti-whirlpool anti ballast to go into that zone. And I'm uh. just here, like, correcting them. Like, no, 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 you don't oh, need no. both. <laughs> you just need one item, and it's anti-whirlpool <laughs> ballast. And, and you, yeah. like, take the path from this position at the top at num in number one. Wow. And, like, I've had to correct so many people with this. And then they have, like... They have with with their ego. They they don't want like to be proven proven wrong. So they start like they start saying stuff in the chat like, uh, "No, you don't know what you're talking about. You need this and this." They're like super convinced of themselves. Um, but then there's other people that that accept this and they like to be corrected, and they like to learn new stuff. So I think this chart was mostly useful for number one, two, and three, and knowing what item you need and that you don't need all the items to access every zone. Mm. And, and and then on top of this, I added the resources because I was like, some people would find the need of knowing which resource you can yeah, farm in nice. which zone. There's so much information that's packed into this. And it's yeah. it actually takes a lot of time to do because I have to find the right colors um, to, to, to target like, the right information 
um, mm. I have to find the right spot to put everything so that's not too much clutter. Um, yes. It's crazy. There's like there's so much information here. There's there's the different paths. There's the different items you need. The like the resources that you can farm. The bounties. The yeah. There's there's I'd so like, much information. I'd like you guys to compare this. Which by the way, myself and the entire chat are learning that you can go up into the bottom ones. <laughs> this is news to pretty much all of us. So thank you for that piece of information, which is remarkable. No problem. So if you want to go from one to the bottom three, you don't necessarily need to have the diving equipment to go down and then down again. You can just go up and have just the one diving equipment that you need. Maybe this saves someone uh, cash or something like that. But I want you to compare this infographic that Coverer made with the most popular one that I managed to find that has been used before it which looks like this what does this tell you compared to the other one <laughs> yeah yes. there's a lot less information they, you don't you even have equipments yeah you don't even have the item names uh, yeah. which are pretty Figure useful there's out. a lot of people that don't know the names they want to buy an yeah. item or they want to craft it yeah how do they look that up yeah what ten thousands <laughs> pretty yes. much a lot of people have many hours in the game but not spent actually exploring and making stuff but cover is built differently to the rest of us so we're all discovering and benefiting from his phd in dofusology <laughs> that's amazing so if i understood you correctly you go about playing the game and see where the information lacks for you and then you make a, gate, a guide or a tool that packs a punch that is very well thought out, but that will solve the problem not only for you, but everybody else that comes after you in as many languages as possible. Exactly. And I'd say there's there's a lot more work to do in this field. And the reason, like, because I started so late with this, I was already level 200. I had done a lot of dungeons before starting content creation. Um, there's a lot of content that... I've missed um, in like in the eyes of someone who wants to make guides. Um, yes. So like in the future, um, if I start and I will probably start from scratch from another server, I'm going to pay a lot more attention to this so that I can make guides for even low levels, for different classes, for different fights. I know there's there's already many guides out there, but um, I'll if if somehow I get like I struggle with something and I see that there's nothing about it on the internet, I'll yeah. I'll definitely try to make something to to like to fill that gap. I uh, I don't care if we have guys. I think I want cover guys for pretty much everything moving forward. <laughs> it's just the attention to detail really gets to me. As someone who makes content, it's so easy to start cutting corners and doing the easy thing of just just put it out there. It's got all the information, but taking the time to think about it, design it well, choose the right color scheme, it makes a world of difference. Just those little details can make a big, big difference in the way it is received. It's aesthetically pleasing, more engaging, more likely to understand what's going on, and more likely to be used and actually be useful. So by cutting corners, a lot of time, we do a disservice to the message by making it unpalatable to the receiver. But... I think you've got a 10 out of 10 in that department and nothing Thank to you. envy anyone with the way you do things. Thank you very much I, for the attention to detail. No problem. I could go into the details of how I make my guys as well if you want. Um, that is a big topic I wanted to ask you about is the research process. How yes, do you arrive at the final definitive information? We know Jay, how he does it from the wiki and things like that. We, we're fami more familiar with his research process, but how do you go about, what tabs do you open? What what do you use? What software is another question. How do you make this whole thing, the background stuff that we don't see? Yeah, so, I mean, there's probably better tools out there, um, but I do with what I have, um, and mm. I try not to spend like money with to, in software um, that, like, I don't have that much money to spend on that, but... Um, so like what I use is Canva for like editing images. Let's go. Um, <laughs> Canva use, it's the best one out there, isn't it? <laughs> it's, awesome. it's, it's very good. It's yeah, free as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then like Powerful. for, for, yeah. Um, for some things I do use paint because, uh, like for example, if I want a, co a specific color, I'd use paint quickly just to get the, the code. 
uh, the hex I see. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I think they only give you like uh, red, green, blue. So I have to convert it to a hex. Um, but mm. but like apart from that, how I make my guides? Um, I'm someone who feels really bad if I put out false information, um, because I feel like I'm wasting people's time if I do that. Um, and it goes against the purpose of trying to help people. So I try to spend a lot of time making my guides, um, making sure that the information is is true, that are that I'm putting facts out there and, yes. and not not rumors. Um, so usually, depending on the guide, uh, it'll it'll differ. But I try to find because I've I've met a lot of people in this game, and some people are more of experts in one category than another. So I'd go first to the people that are experts in some in in their own domain. So like, I have a few friends that are, are super good in one v one, and that's all they do. I know other people who only do breeding. So for my breeding guide, for example, I went to uh, that friend that I had, which does like only breeding, and this is basically how I learned to breed. I ask him questions, um, yeah. and I. I, I do try try to 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 gather information on the web, see like what's on the wiki, what's on the mm -hmm. Fispoli Noob, what's mm -hmm. on YouTube, and I try to see like what information is already there, how it's presented, yeah. how can can it be presented better? Because how do I do? How do I want to be? Like how do I want to see that information? How would um, I? Well, how would I put it if I wanted to see it myself? If one if I wanted to pull it up. How would how do I want to see it? And that's how I make my guides. Um, so yeah, so and there's a lot of information that's not even on the web. That's not uh, you don't find any anywhere in game. I know there's a section in game. There's like a menu in game that explains a lot of game mechanics. Um, that doesn't go too much into detail, although it could yes. be it could be yeah. uh, interesting sometimes. Um, but so for for example, for the states chart. I would test yeah. m like that one? yeah so I would test each case myself with like uh, different classes I would ask a few friends in game to test some things with me wow uh, but because I do have all all the characters it does simplify it a little bit for me <laughs> like for example so if I want to test with portals I have an Elio so <laughs> I can go test with different monsters I yeah. use the def defensive to check um the like monsters and what states they apply like mm -hmm. unmovable for example or which monster mm. applies this other state, and I go test myself to see. And I also test within one test case with like one state and one class, or one mechanic, let's say portals and unmovable. I'd I'd really try to to check like different because I'm kind of a like I'm a tester after all. I'm a programmer as yeah. well, so I have this 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 mental exercise of checking um, edge cases. So I try to check really all the possible options you can have all the possible interactions you can have with a portal um and with a monster and stuff like yeah. that so i try to cover everything make sure there's no mistake i share it with a few friends to see if they can spot a mistake um yes. and these friends obviously are good at the game as well so i try to pick mm -hmm. people that are good in pvm some that are good in pvp that they they know different spells of different classes um and really like i try to re like I, try, I already said it but i try my best so that the information is correct like I, I double check so much. It's an impressive cocktail. It's an impressive yeah. cocktail I've noticed between the job side of it, which means you test and you have to think of all possibilities and your perfectionism as a person. When you marry the two, holy shit, that's why you put in a lot of hours before you actually release the information. Test from all angles and make sure it's quite right. That's, that's right. That's impressive. The other thing is who needs the offensive when you are the offensive? You have all classes and you've got all it takes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that well, is awesome. There's, yeah, I, I actually have a lot of knowledge about monsters and classes, mm. but of course there's so much more that I don't know or that I forget I tend to forget because just because of the fact that there's so much information, so many monsters. Um but yeah, a lot of people just ask me right away instead of going to like the offensive. Of, instead of opening the offensive on the side, they just ask me in game like, "Oh, what does this do?" Um, <laughs> what? Even yeah. after you do all the effort and put the content out there, you still get asked about it. Oh, I get asked a lot of questions. What? <laughs> Actually, that brings me to another thing, um, which is not uh, necessarily um, related to to guides. Although I want to make a guide for that. 
which is yeah. theory crafting um, using uh, like a, a set builder to how mm. how to do this efficiently. And I love the theory craft. I love building sets. And this is something I haven't shared with the community, um, but I plan on doing this in the future. That's awesome. I'll be looking forward to that. You're getting us all excited about this project. It's awesome. Uh, there's one thing I have noticed about the States one. Do you know the, the chart? Let me just put it up really quickly again. Um, when you look through all of them, uh, the Gravity one is... Yeah. Um, have uh, you play Fekka as your main, and we have a gravity glyph called Into the Fold now. Can't remember yeah. the new name of it, but it has a gravity state. But I think it is a completely different one from the one we see here. Isn't that right? Like it has a different mechanic added to it. Like it's unshakable plus or unmovable. It's 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 a bit different. I can't put my uh, finger on it because I've not spared too much time thinking about the states and stuff like that, but I'm sure you have. Have yeah. you noticed that at all? Is that... It's true. that crossed your mind? If um, the, the Gravity Glyph spell um, does have a combination of two states. It applies the Gravity State and the Unshakable State, which Let's is why... Go. Yeah, so you had it right. Good job. Um, and you said you didn't touch Fika that much, so props to you for knowing that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you'd combine the two the two rows of gravity and gotcha. unshakable, awesome. and this is why a lot of a lot of um, mechanics don't apply to the gravity glyph because it's literally a combination of two states. Yes, yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, I've I've noticed that, but I couldn't quite tell which one it is or how it combines them because I'm not done any testing, so to speak, to get to the end of it. But yeah. I just started pointing that one out because I've looked at that mobility state so much. It's the reference now. Uh, just a quick shout out to the Discord server. You have all the links pinned at the top. Uh, we have a dedicated channel where if Cover makes a new uh, guide of some sort, you bet it's going there straight away. If anybody else makes a guide, something useful for the community, if you point us out towards a website or something like that, please do let me know and I will happily add it to the tools channel under tools and info. It's out there. It's a big collection of the best tools that are available that we use regularly. And it informs me asking cover a question about what tools he uses because more often than not, you discover that he will be using a tool that I didn't know existed to begin with. And then what do we do? We add it to that list so you can benefit from it later on in the future so back to your research phase so we know how you identify the gaps now when you're going about your business you have a question let's go and look at what's out there how people have done it how people have covered it how do you double check the veracity of that whether they got it right or not whether they've put their ideas and thoughts or their impressions of it how do you know that it's true first of all that what everybody else has and is working with now is true what tools do you use to double check that yeah, so uh, basically, when I see one information somewhere, I try to, to look for patterns. So I try to, to see if other people reported that information in the same way. So that, that way, if I have multiple sources that say the same thing, I know it's probably reliable. Um, so for some facts that are, are pretty much rumors, actually, um, I'd go into the forums. And this is a big plus for me because I speak French and I can read the forums really thoroughly. Yes. Sometimes yeah. you'll find a message or a comment from a moderator or from a developer. And these informa these types of informations are so crucial because it's literally from the, from the source of the, the game. So you know this is a fact. Um, yes. <laughs> so sometimes, yeah. yeah, sometimes I find information there. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, this is a pattern I'm starting to notice between people who are who have encyclopedic knowledge of the game, who dive deep, like yourself and Jay, for example, I'm thinking. The connection there is French. And I definitely see myself in there, despite not doing it too much or making guides in the ways that you guys do. But I do see that having the ability to scour forums in French leads you to more factual, correct information than having to just do it with whatever is available in English. So that is definitely something that helps. And that was generally the idea behind trying to have anybody from the company, especially if we could get a developer and we have succeeded in doing that. We had Papino come in. My God, I can't tell you how impressed I was with 
being able to ask him, can you double check this for us? We've always been thinking that if you change your client to French, then you get more luck. <laughs> and he'll be able to just flat out right tell you, look, I've written that line of code and this is what it does. This does not exist. This is how it works. This is in uh, faxed by prospection. This does not matter. It's so amazing to get good information instead of having to do the effort because i don't take it for granted that everybody knows how to speak french and goes through the length of searching for and who wants to be reading forums in french anyway everybody's got better things to do in life but thank you very much for doing that leap being the connection the bridge and putting in the work for something that is as trivial and silly as a game that we play i definitely do appreciate that and i'm sure chat and people at large that have used your guys and know more about you now will be a lot more appreciative moving forward thank you very much for that i appreciate it and just in the spirit of covering the madness behind the genius there's something that i've spotted from your activities in the discord and I can't tell you how impressed and baffled I was by that. <laughs> I don't have an Excel sheet for anything in the game. I try and find tools that people have made. Yet, you and a handful of people always send screenshots of the most baffling Excel sheets and stuff like that. And I'm sure there's more than one person in the chat that are curious <laughs> about how you... What what do you do to manage various aspects of the game? What tools do you use to keep yourself on track? Know all the 19 accounts? Whatever it is that you do to keep yourself in the know and organized. Yeah, so there is um, an Excel sheet that I've been working on for a while now with all my characters in them and different tabs for different aspects of the game. And this is yeah. really because I'm a completionist and because I like to track progress. It takes a lot of yeah. time to change between characters just to see what's been done and what's yeah. like just to see my progress basically um mm. i tried to do like volbus on a different on multiple characters um i like i tried to do also like all the bounties possible for each character so if i find a, if i find if i find a bounty in game mm. and like on a, on my feka for example and i know i need it on another character but i don't know which one because i have 19 of them or 20 <laughs> of them i need the spreadsheet so that i can open up quickly and tell, okay, I need to oh switch to this God. character and then go <laughs> wow. beat the bounty. So, oh, wow. so it's, I use impressive. Excel for, for different stuff. <laughs> um, so the bounties is one of them. There's also mm. exploration. I, I'm trying to get access to every single zone on every single character. Wow. Um, and that's just helpful in general because if I need to access a zone to go help a friend for, for a dungeon and I need mm. a specific class to help him, then I need to have access. Uh, otherwise, I'm kind of wasting time. Um, sure. So, yeah, and I, and because I'm a completionist and I I like to have everything. I have another tab for common spells that I want to get every common spell on every single class. Yes. Um, yeah. So, so I've <laughs> already a joke for you in chat. <laughs> you got them all. That's why nobody in Draconiers can find uh, the bounties. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think it's yeah. I mean, there's a problem with bounties, but it's pretty much level 120 and lower because it's linked to the Emerald mm. Quest. And because nice. Mono account, well, Draconiros is like the most populated server. So you're going to have a hard time finding 120 and lower. Above that, it's actually not that hard. Um, and even Arch Monsters are not that hard to find. Um, well, except if you're playing during the day for, for Euro Powers. But because I'm actually in NA, in North America, and mm. my hours are different. So, like, yes. I'd be playing during the night, and as like in Dofus time, it would be the night or like three a.m. Mm. in the morning, mm. and it's pretty easy to find arch monsters ah, and bounties. Course. So, this is another advantage. Like, it's actually a big advantage to be in an, another time zone, especially yes. the one uh, Eastern Standard Eastern Standard Time, because the maintenances are done while I'm sleeping. Yes, let's so go. This is crazy. <laughs> so, like here, it would be two a.m. when yeah. the maintenance, maintenance starts. And anyways, I need to go sleep. So, so, so this works fine for me. I just go sleep. I wake up, and the maintenance is pretty much already done. So I never have to deal with like waiting to play <laughs> while a maintenance is going on. That's awesome. So the maintenance for you is a different experience to the rest of us. It's a reminder to go sleep, and then you wake up, pick up your compensation, having missed the entire fireworks. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> Spectacular. That is remarkable. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it shows you that there are always advantages and dis disadvantages to any circumstance in life. Yes, you don't get to hang out with the most uh, populated hours. So if you need help, you're not going to have access to the most number of available people. But at the same time, you get all the bounties, you get get less pressure on nodes if you're farming, you can find arc monsters more easily, and you can yeah. hear your voice. There's less bots, less noise. Le vacarne, the life's noise sure. all around. Yeah, that's spectacular. Oh, the one downside is no compensation for login before the rollbacks. Hold on. Do you only get compensation if you've logged in Junior in the rollback? You do, but this is not actually a downside because let me tell you what. Um, uh. I have time to log in. Um, like for the, the most recent one, I've had time to log in and just chat with a few friends. I didn't really mm. have time to play much, but I've had time to actually log in the game before a rollback was done. So I do get the compensations. Um, like it's the like maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like they don't do a rollback right away. They they need some time to find the issue yes. and then announce that there's going to be a rollback and then do a wow. rollback. So I have time to log in and still get the compensation. Holy smokes, that is awesome. That is brilliant. Yep. I mean, you've heard it, guys. We should all move to Canada if you want to improve That's the it. quality of Dofus life. <laughs> Come here, guys. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Just... players, like uh, a lot of good players and good friends that I have that are in Europe um, and that it's a bit sad because it, there's it's there's a difficulty in finding um, common a common time to play together uh, yeah, oftentimes yeah. like they'd go sleep when I just arrive to mm. play the game um, but you know there's always a way to find a, a good time so we do that but it's not way it's not always um, let's say optimized yeah fair enough you can't have the best of everything in any situation you always have to make some sort of sacrifices and that's just part of life really yeah you live in canada it's a bit cold but it's cool it's nice <laughs> yeah, it's cold in the winter it's hot in the summer it's two extremes yeah two extremes yeah yeah i, I just thought of an anecdote that we've spoken about earlier and that i definitely don't want to gloss over regardless of how long the conversation goes so i want to put it out there right now uh, there's a little happenstance so there was um uh, this um, a guy that is part of the English community that streams infrequently that was doing expeditions on the last day and he set himself a goal of doing 10 and he reached 9 and just looked through the list and everything looked daunting and that was that's the moment I tagged along and I said why don't you do more Wolf it's super easy and he had a big belly laugh he was like it was one of the hardest ones I've had to do I was like no 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 Coverer has soloed it in pretty much every class, so you can do it. He's like, what? What do you mean? Really? I can do it? So I've sent him the link, and I've explained the strategy. He watched it live on the stream, uh, understood the strategy, and implemented it first try, and he hit his goal. And he was so delighted because he got another piece of cosmetic that he wanted on all four of his characters. So I just thought to put that out there. What you make and the quality behind it and the work and efforts do lead to life-changing things for real people that may not even know who you are as a person. But I hope after watching this, you do know who Cover is. That is remarkable. I'm just thought put that one out there. It's really <laughs> to crazy. cement. Yeah, um, it's good. It's really good. Uh, yeah, it's really cool that I can have this effect on people. Um, and this is a, a goal I had, which was to solo more of these. Unfortunately, I ran out of time because yeah. my format for these kind of videos was like, I'm going to make a guide to explain the dungeon and then mm. solo it. And that yeah. took so much time. And not uh, not that many people found the, the the guide part that useful, which I should have realized uh -huh. earlier. But so I spent so much time doing this that I ran out of time. I didn't have time to, to like solo all the others. Mm -hmm. But um, so yeah, so I should have. So looking back, I should have just soloed instead of uh, trying to make a guide to explain to people. Um, yeah. But uh, for Muo specifically. There is a way to solo it without a sidekick. The way I did was using a sidekick. But if you do it without a sidekick, you just have to play distance. It's not that interesting to do. Um, that's another type of um, that's another type of aspect I take into account when I want to make a video 
um, mm-hmm. if it's not interesting and obviously, and for me, like anyone can think about it, then I probably won't post it if it's mm. too easy or stuff like that. Um, it's good. Yeah. I, I like posting stuff that's interesting for me so that it's probably going to be interesting for other people. Um, yeah, I, so yeah, I don't only make guides, um, or charts that are that only have information like as images but yeah. some guides are like how to make commas in a cert, uh, during a certain event like now there's a volcano coming up yeah. and and uh, not only me but other people also have made guides on how to make uh i don't know about commas but how to do the the quests on volcano um, yes the repeatable but, one big commas exactly and yeah. i also make like other guides for specific quest fights um yeah but for me it's it's fun to do like to, to do solo dodges and it works well with the mono account server because you only play one character there's mm. a series actually i i started but i don't do frequently which is i roll a random class i roll a random dungeon and whatever yes. i get i'm going to try <laughs> the and so flip. far yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> um Crazy. So just, yeah just rolling a <laughs> dice but so far for every rolls that i've done i've been mm. able to complete it I've only done like three episodes, I think, um, but I plan to do it more in the future. Uh, this is something really fun, but I'm always scared of getting something um, that's almost impossible to do and that I have yeah. to try it and not succeed. Yeah. <laughs> Osa with Eternal Conflict. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I did Osa with Slarg, which was a challenge yes. for me because my, my experience with Osa was not that in-depth. So yeah. I had to really, especially because Osa got changed so many times. Yeah. That I have to relearn uh, what the what the spells do, and again, even though this is not exactly a guide, uh, but it could be seen as a guide. I've I went through the same Challenge, process of, yeah. of asking. Yeah, I went I went through the same process of asking an expert Osa, a main Osa, like, what do you think the best element for a soloing is, and what would you do in this dungeon? Like, I ask some questions to help me figure out like what element to use. Um, mm. and then figure out like what set should I build um, I go like I use the office lab a lot um, to to th- like theory craft different theory sets craft, yeah. I can make and and the beta like the beta version of Dofus is so useful especially if you're a content creator yes. the, the beta is not only like if you oh. think the beta is only for testing the new stuff in the updates you're totally wrong the beta is so good and even if you're not a content creator you're just a normal player yeah. The beta version of Dofus allows you to to get any item, um, like any class, perfect stats, perfect stats, and just try out any build you want to you you want to build on the official server and see if it's good yes. or not. It could save you so <laughs> many comments. Yes, this is so cool because uh, a couple of things. First of all, big thumbs up for Dofus Lab. It's the best website for creating sets and stuff it's sad that they don't update it as much as the other ones but it, it, it is my favorite one it pleases me that anybody else would use it and the other thing i've said it repeatedly during every sort of beta if you've been thinking about changing sets or you're curious about what your character would look in a set go and try it just try it it's free you get the sets without having to spend a single canvas because what you find is people will go to extreme lengths to buy the set and then just completely realize this is rubbish. I don't like it after three days. Yep. But you've already spent the cameras and it's gone now. And yeah. That's remarkable. You, yeah. Thank you, for you that. can you can do even more than that. If I know there's a builder, there's like Dofus Book uh skinator that you can check your colors, for example, but sometimes the item doesn't fit super well on your character on Dofus Book. Um the colors don't match super well. You want to check how it looks in game. On the beta, you can do that as well. You can you have access to like color change potion for free. You have access to all cosmetics. The, you can test literally everything on the beta to prepare yourself and save some commas on official server. And I want to say, this is how I found out Coverer exists. It was one video in particular that was titled 10 Things You Don't Know About Dofus. And that really struck me like, oh, I don't know these 10 things? Go on, challenge accepted. <laughs> In fact, I did not know a lot of those things. And I was surprised. So it, it speaks to what he said earlier. And I, I do firmly believe it's true. If it's not interesting, you won't put it out there. So there's a lot of things you could have populated that list with. But you went with ones that aren't necessarily easy to know. 
Like, uh, if you give AP to a Poochie, it will instantly kill you. It's not yep. something that you find out very easily or know about intuitively. So that is remarkable. Thank you very much for that one. Particular. Yeah, I, I actually made, like, I I write a lot. I yeah. I make a lot of documents for the videos that I'm going to make. I I document a lot of information. Um, so for this kind of videos uh, where there's a lot of facts, I... I I try to ask also a lot of uh, a lot of my friends on Dracula Euros like give me some facts you think no one would know, um, and I try to think of them myself. Also, when I discover something new, I write it down in that document. So nice. I have a document with so many facts, <laughs> and I and I'm here like trying to pick and choose what's going to be good the to, to fit, yeah, to fit yeah, in the yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. I I have <laughs> other videos already prepared uh, for like part two and three about that uh, like things no you didn't way. know in Dofus. Can so, we get a spoiler? Uh, Can I use my streamer privilege and ask for a spoiler? Like one thing that I might find cool. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, you already you've already seen it in this uh, in this uh, podcast. I've oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, the in the abyssal uh, exploration guides, the 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 three doors at the top that lead to the bottom. That's one yes. of the facts that yes, uh, I didn't cool. release, but that's noted <laughs> in in my document. Wow, that is remarkable. I'll tell you what, uh, there's there's another aspect I think you would be marvelous at, and very few people cover it. It's the quality of life tools that we have in Dofus, like shortcuts, what you can do. There's a lot of interfaces, and I'm not entirely convinced that we know or use them properly, or fully, I would like to say. So I think there's a lot of uh, work to be done at the level of pointing out some really cool things that everybody could start using right now. Shortcuts or whatever. <laughs> That's a good one. And I've thought about that. And I have a document with a list of tools. Um, I just, I didn't edit it. I didn't release it yet. But yeah. it's planned. It's planned. Don't worry. That is amazing. See, I had an original thought cover has a document populated and ready to publish for a video about it. This is why we like him. And I hope he continues doing what he does. Um, I've got a couple more questions and I wanted to ask you, how are you for time? Would you like us to take a break? Because I realized the hour just flew by. Are you okay with the length of the conversation so far? Or would you like me to bring it to a natural close? It's all good for me. I can keep going. No problem. Amazing. Brilliant stamina. Two topics I definitely do want to cover. So if you want to be brief, please, by all means. But if you want to expand and take the time to do it, this is also the format. I'm staying here until you have had enough of me. Okay. <laughs> so the first one I've started thinking about a lot more recently after having a conversation with Jay. And it's a combination of two things. One is something that he said about uh, while appreciating the quality of the things, the tools, the knowledge we're gathering on the Discord, which I also want to get your thoughts on, the Discord generally. Um, it's not as good a medium to convey information as a wiki, which is centralized that everyone can find very easily because the Discord is a hidden thing. You need to find the link for in places. Lots more effort than just SEO. You type the keywords and then that's the first link that comes out. So what do you think about the current state of things when you make a guide? Do you make it with the intention of it being available for everyone so you plaster it everywhere? Or do you think we should put everything in one place like Adolphus Wiki? Or do you think that do you share Jay's thought that the Discord being niche and hidden is not necessarily a good thing for knowledge in the game in general? Have you thought about things like that at all? Uh, I have thought about it, but I don't have a, def a definite solution that I've uh, come to. Although mm. I'd say as a player, if you're looking for information, like you should be aware of the different discords and the wiki and the different tools that you can use to get that information. Um, so, so yeah, when I post a guide, I try to post it a bit everywhere to get coverage. And so that when you Google it, when you Google the, like what you're looking for, it's going to pop up somewhere. Um, so like I, I try to post on Reddit, on different Discord servers, uh, on my mm -hmm. channel, of course. And then I, I try to share it with friends um, so that they're aware of like what's being made. Um, so yeah, I just try to get as much coverage as I can, especially because I know that what I publish is useful information. Um, so yeah, so for other types of videos, I, I won't try to like for videos that are not specifically guides, I'm not going to post them everywhere. Um, 
but for guys that I know will benefit, that everyone will benefit. I try to push it a bit everywhere. Um, we we have a wiki, which is like an English wiki. Yes. Um, I think we can edit it. Like I think anyone can edit from the community. Yes, um, we know that because we've got the top contributor in the last conversation, who is Jay, and we've done a little demonstration of how to do that. If anyone's curious. Nice. So. But the, the problem is that there's so many questions in the game, there's so many content, and it's not all um, in the wiki. And on top of that, a lot of the wiki is outdated with old information and needs updating. So there's so much work to do, and no one here is being paid to do that, um, even though that would be ideal. Um, <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I'd enjoy like uh, working on that if I was being paid for that. but. It's not yeah. work that everyone likes to do either, but yeah. it would definitely be good to have like a specific website for like all the guides and specific people to that are experts to have their like as as people confirming that these guides are are nice are these guides are useful and they have correct information. Exact. Mm. Yeah. And how was the experience with you so far? I had a little story to precede this question. Is uh, um. I've j I'm a big Redditor and everybody knows it by now. It's the social media I've used for as long as I can remember. And in it, uh, I have seen a post recently about the Astrobes app. Some people that wanted to redo the Dofus wiki. I wanted to redo the old Imps village that wanted to redo Dofus. It was an ambitious big project and we've all joined their Discord. And I saw that you were quite active there. And I didn't know that you were on Discord. That's how I discovered that you were there. And the lack of interaction with the brilliant stuff you put out there made it so that I had to invite you on the spot and I send you I sent you this big message saying yo this is what's happening context 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 would you like to join how have you found it as a tool to gather knowledge for people to converse and especially if you could put an emphasis on what you think can be done to better it generally so this is about um the specific discord pub yes okay so i think this discord is really well but um, I'd have some improvements to do, to to add to it. I think I'm all ears. Is, yeah, but I think like overall, it's great work. Um, a lot of things are there. It it regroups many content creators for the international community, which is great. Um, but I think there's a bit of clutter, um, and that's really just um, like some some channels could be renamed, some channels could be removed or merged into other channels. Uh, we could go into detail like um, some other time because mm -hmm. like I don't want to say like stuff right away. I want I I like to think about stuff before for sure, actually for sure, for sure, for offering sure. a solution. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. the the Astro app right now, uh, the Astro app Discord is not very active. Um, I think the the aim yeah. was I think the aim was to have it like be kind of active for for the whole community, um, at least be ready for the launch of Dofus Unity. Uh, right now, I'd say it's not going very well. I've tried to be a bit active on there to see like if people would uh, continue and be active. But then again, we don't really well. I at least don't really know who's in charge of who's in charge of this Discord. How can they can they actually be trusted to yeah to ha to have this Discord be like um, continue a lot a lot a long way with the Dofus Unity. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe we need just a bit more on their part, but the work they're doing is very good. They have like good tools, um, like really great bots. The Discord is actually a very nice tool if you use it correctly uh, with the channels, with the different bots you can have to gather information. You can have a bot to gather information from a specific website, another bot from yeah. a, another website, and everything is centralized on a single Discord server. Mm -hmm. And this is very well done in Astrid Zap, I'd say. It's, it's well done as well in the Discord pub, Discord International pub. Uh, well, we can always pub. progress and learn because um, the reality of it is I've never had the Discord server. I've never managed the one and I've had to learn everything from how you create a category to how you set up permissions and it's all overwhelming. This is not what I signed up for when I wanted to create content, <laughs> but it yeah. has grown to be the place that is the most active international speaking, English speaking server right now. And I'm more interested moving forward because in two weeks I will end work. I've put in my resignation. I want to do full-time content creation 
for at least half a year and do it properly. And it's one of the big axes that I wanted to improve by putting a lot more work into it. Want it to be to rise up to the expected. So it's a, a no brainer to join it because it has everything that everybody needs. So I'm always looking for areas of improvement. So don't be surprised if I hit you up for a chat at some point and be like, give me your thoughts. I'm ready. Give me, oh, hit me. No problem. <laughs> I've, so I've had, uh, well, I, I was a leader of a guild called Kin um, a while ago. And now it's not really active, but I had this, it's like, it's like I was managing the Discord for that guild. Mm. And um, it's not super easy if you're not familiar with it, um, like managing permissions, managing bots. Mm. But I had the help of a few guild members, and we've developed like our own bot for Discord. Um, mm. you, you can do some really nice stuff. And there's a lot of information about this on the web if you want to learn like how to manage a Discord server. Mm -hmm. I I want in the future to make, well, in the, in the near future, I want to make uh, a Discord server for my own cha YouTube channel, which I haven't done yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I probably should have worked on it earlier. But I want to have one for my own channel so that I can share stuff that is specific to me. Yeah. But at the same time, like I'm very happy to spend time on other servers where everything is centralized. Um, I, yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you very much for that. And we count on your best thoughts in order to improve things because you also use it. So we want it to be even better for you and present more opportunities for content creators like yourself to enhance your experience generally of making content. Uh, great. The next access I wanted to discuss with you is I've realized this and I can't tell you how that you're more of a celebrity than we actually know. And this is going to surprise chat. Am I? And we know that you do make content. We know that you stream every now and then. But how many people know of a few that you have, the appearances that you've made uh, while you were in your olden PvP days, facing Sapu in 1v1, facing Ooze in 1v1. And the other thing is a few that started with the current most popular streamer in France, Uzune, that led to him making a rebuttal, a video answer to one of your comments. Would you like, first of all, I'll put something up on the stream, but would you like to tell us <laughs> the story behind it? Give us as I much context as possible and then explain how it ended the whole saga. And I've put a comment up yeah. there. Tell us what, what are we looking at now? Okay. So in this image, you can see, I don't know if you know this. Well, he's pretty popular. Uh, content creator for, for French, uh, Dofus. He's called Huz or Uzune. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, my channel back then was called Monkey Lee. And yeah. this is me uh, commenting on one, one of his videos saying, Pour info, je lâche un dislike à chaque fois que tu m'appelles noob au début de toutes tes vidéos. <laughs> basically, uh, for information, every, every time you say noob at the start of your videos, I'm going to dislike your video. And uh, that's he does say, uh, Salut les noobs, hello noobs. Exa exactly. He calls uh, his uh, audience noobs. Yeah. And like I didn't watch too many of his videos, but I said that as like a troll comment. Um, I didn't find that super cool that like he just like assumes everyone's a noob. But I know yeah. he's probably not saying it super seriously. But yeah. just as a troll comment, I left it there. And then in one of his um, F FAQ videos, he's just replying to my comment, and he's made, kind of making it a bit dramatic. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> he got under his skin. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so this is the story of me uh, being uh, on one of his videos. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. By the way, that is an actual video from Ooze. This is his setup, the ginger hair, the images in the background of Naruto and stuff. That's how he streams all the time. And you can find out more about him uh, on YouTube. It's H-U-Z. That's his handle. So you got under the skin of one of the most popular French streamers. But Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's this is not this is the my my channel name before I changed it to Covered Office before I started making content. So this is why yes. the image and the name is different. Remarkable. That is spectacular. <laughs> that clarifies yeah. it a lot. Thank you very much for that. No problem. And, uh, and then yeah, the other one. Yeah, the PvP stuff. Yeah, so the other one, I can probably try to find a video somewhere. I don't I don't have it uh, saved, but um, in one of Sapu's videos, Sapu is a big uh, PvP guy 
you probably know it even though uh you probably know him even though you don't uh speak french um he's a good commentator as well i used to watch yeah. a lot of soccer he does kind of like uh almost only pvp although i know he, he does dreams as well but mm. he does so much pvp and me back in the days of having like I think I only had like my Fekka and a Craw on Draconira. Oh, well, it was Elysial back then. And then I was like just playing around with my Craw with a PVM set, just like enjoying uh, a PVM. And then at some point I wanted to, to use like a sparkling, a sparkling pebble to craft a certain item. And I didn't want to spend commas, but just buying it. So I was like, okay, let's do a bit of 1v1s with my PVM set and <laughs> I'll get a few, a few Colo tokens. So I queued up in 1v1. <laughs> yeah, so I queued up in 1v1 with my craw on a PVM set. Full chance. And he's there, like, making his video. He he wasn't live. He's just recording with another name. So I had no idea it was Sapu. And so I just treated him as, like, a random guy. Not super experienced. So I did, like, plenty of mistakes. Like, running the wrong side. Like, trying to find line of sight and not finding line of sight in the end. Like, taking oh, a lot of risks. Yeah. And then... <laughs> Yeah, so like I end up losing really very badly to him in a one v one, and then uh, at some point I I see like he he releases a video, which is like a new mode uh, with an uginak uh, fire uginak ret uh, mp ret or something like that, and then I'm just watching it, and then eventually I see myself pop up on the screen. I'm like, wait, what? He's facing me, and like I see him commenting on uh, on my actions and saying like oh this oh guy what is he God. doing he's like he's dumb what, why, <laughs> oh why is he doing God. this and for me like it's totally not a serious fight i'm using a pvm set yeah i'm just like trying to farm a bit of tokens not really taking this seriously and he's there like crit criticizing every single move that oh i do oh my god so it was That's funny brutal yeah, yeah it's a bit <laughs> brutal, brutal but funny as well yeah um, and so that's how i got featured uh on sapu's channel that's awesome. See, I knew the, the story would be interesting. But as, as Jay said in the comments just there, Joker origin story. That's how the bad guy, <laughs> that's the story of how he started. <laughs> Going out for revenge. <laughs> the guy wanted some sparkling pebbles. Why did you match him with Sapper? <laughs> for real. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is remarkable. Thank you for that. I had a good laugh. <laughs> it's, it's one of the things that happened without... You can't do nothing about it. <laughs> yep. Oh. That's, Are you uh, ready that's... for some... Uh, did, did you have some more to say about that, by the way? Yeah, it's like... That's the one criticism um, a lot of people, including me, have towards other uh, big content creators. That mm. they'll... For, they, if, if they want to showcase a build... They're going to try, um, well, I don't know if they do it on purpose, but they often uh, get, like, get matched with noobs and just like obliterate them. And then you have the feeling watching the video that this it's build powerful. is super good, it's super powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. And yeah. like you should get that. And, and th those types of videos get shared because like there's a yes. big, there's a big, uh, <laughs> like there's a big result. Like you don't usually yeah. see like new builds like that that have like such an effect. And so mm. they get shared a lot. They get very popular. And sadly, um, the Ankama devs, like, it looks like they, they get inspired or they take criticism, not criticism, but they take, like, uh, these that? videos into account to, like, mm. do some, uh, some changes on some classes. And so that's why sometimes you'd feel like a change on a class is not justified. It's, it's sadly the case that the devs get influenced by these big content creators. Hmm. That makes complete sense, yeah. The sensational nature, sensational nature of those videos makes it so that people go and make purchasing decisions on that basis and it drives business for the company as a whole, more views, more players. It makes sense. Uh, if, if they live from it like Sapo does, you've got to play the game a little bit and do some clickbait and some yeah. rage bait and whatever, yeah. It makes complete sense. I wanted to end all this sort of serious conversation uh, with one central question about the FECA. I've watched your videos about the FECA itself. I play, it's the second character I've created since I come back, the FECA. I play it a lot. I'm very familiar with how it works and things like that. 
but I've never pushed it to the limit that you have of knowing the class so well that you can give your appreciation, your informed appreciation of its state, of how it could improve and things like that. And with distance and time having taken place between the last time you've made that video and all the changes that the class has undergone, I wanted to hear from you about the FECA. What do you think about its current state and what do you think could be improved? Yeah, so the current FECA is actually, it feels a lot better to play because you you have like more tools to your disposal. You have more spells like uh, push or you actually have a passive you can work around to to increase your resistances. It's, it feels mm -hmm. good to have a passive. It feels good to have more tools to your disposal to move stuff mm -hmm. around. Um, and really like having, for example, the invulnerabilities that you can now summon and make like an AOE invuln zone. Yeah. Like there's there's new stuff they added, which yeah. feels a lot better to play. The the previous Feka was mm -hmm. very very well. Once you've already discovered what it, what it had as tools, and it was like very little. Um, after that, it kind of gets a little bit boring because, especially if you try other classes like an Eliotrope or a Hopper Mage that have so many yeah. options, they have so many tools, and then you yeah. go play a Feka which can only Rampart, uh, like give shield reduction, um, <laughs> like invuln. It's 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 basically an invuln machine. Um, people mm. use it as that. So and mm. like you can do some damage, uh, but that's it. You don't have much tools. You can't debuff. You can't heal yourself. You can't life steal. You can't like erosion. You can't no. erode. You can't. Yeah, you, there's so many things you can't do with this class that mm. eventually like you kind of get bored. But now like they kind of revive this a little bit where. Um, you enjoy the class more, um, especially I'd say now you can play around uh, glyphs, start of turn glyphs. Uh, like in the past, the the comparison between glyphs and glyph auras was was that glyph auras are always better than glyphs because start of turn glyphs they just like they're bad for your team. They they remove their AP. Yes. They remove your your team's MP range, yes. uh, and like it's even bad for yourself if you're playing like an AP reduction build and the enemy put, like places you inside your own glyph, then you get like penalized. You you lose AP. Mm. Like it doesn't make sense. It's mm. the yeah, it's, it's <laughs> there's no synergy between you and your allies if you're playing with yeah. sort of different glyphs. And now they've changed us. They they've changed that. Now uh like the glyphs don't only um like stop affecting your allies negatively but they can also give them resistances through the passive, which I think is yeah. really cool. The only nice. thing I find it's a bit sad is that there's not a lot of ways to give the passive. Um, initially in the beta and when the class was released, well, when the, when the new class was released um, with the update, um, you had the shepherd state that was on multiple spells and they just removed it from a bunch of different uh, spells. So now yeah. you don't have many options to give the passive to your allies which no. I find a bit sad. And recently, they've also made a modification where reinforced protection would only trigger if you're inside that glyph. So, and this is a huge nerf, to be honest. It's mm. it, it feels sad for for playing distance with the glyphs. It's kind of still okay for melee, but it's a bit sad because glyphs were were really fun to play. And in my opinion, this was not a justified nerf. I think that nerf was to push people into the the new classes that were reworked like Sedida and Ecoflip, so like to generate more oh. fast changes. So this is just my personal opinion, but I think it's wow. kind of a, of a PvP move, and pushing people to the to the to the meta to the current meta, which is Sedida and Ecoflip. Mm -hmm. So and because Feka was the latest meta before that. Yeah, that's surprising. Thank you very much for that perspective. It's nothing I've ever heard before about decision making on the basis of wanting people to play certain classes so making others less effective and slightly worse yeah. that's surprising and spectacular yeah. i did cover but this in uh, the news and i said that the long range farm glyph feka has been completely shattered which is was. sad it was and um but on the other hand you could see it as the fact that uh, because the variant of reinforced protection is Feka Feka Shield, mm. um, and you don't you didn't really need Feka Shield because you had enough tanking, um, 
with like if you had a, a, a set with resistances well, through the passive, through like a rampart fortification, Aegis, you have so many ways to protect yourself that you don't really need Fekka Shield. And a lot of people, including me, were going with reinforced protection to have more damage, a bigger damage output. Now that reinforced protection was nerfed, if you're playing a distance build that uses glyphs, um, a lot of people would go with Fekka Shield instead and maybe try to support their allies more. Um, okay. And that's probably in, in PvP that that would be the case. But a lot of people, yeah. it's just a lot of people get affected by changes so much that they just change builds or they just switch class. They like, they're not happy Follow with the meta. what Uncom is doing. Yeah, exactly. Mm. The hoppers, as we like to call them. <laughs> right. The, the meta hoppers. Yeah. Do you have anything else to add about the P.E.K.K.A. in general? Things like you would like to see improved? Maybe just reverse reinforced protection to make it castable and affect glyphs from anywhere? Anything else generally that is not sort of localized in time? Nothing close, like big improvements or anything you've been thinking about? Um, I think like a bigger rework. Like I was expecting actually a bigger rework of the P.E.K.K.A. class. Right now, we've had... We had a small rework, but the the mechanics are still there, like as is. We they they try to keep Fika with um, damage reduction and like Masquerader with shield points, and so we know they're never gonna give shield points to Fekas. So that's that's uh, an interesting yeah. uh, part of uh, the Fika class. That yeah, um, like a lot of people are expecting maybe to have one more mechanic. Uh, like we know, it's gonna it's not gonna be shield points, but maybe uh, debuff or erosion or something like that. That mm. if you analyze it, Fekka has the least uh, amount of common mechanics that all classes have. Yeah. Could, yeah. So I've I've said this multiple times that like you can't heal, you can't life steal, you can't erode, you can't debuff, um, and most classes can do at least one of them, just at yeah. least one. But Fekka, none. So this is like a big difference between Fekka and the other classes. Um, and so maybe like try to integrate one of those mechanics into Fekka, but without making it too strong. So so that it's balanced in some way, but you still have access to the mechanic. So for example, Rogue has a debuff, but it's not used um, a lot. And a lot of people don't know that Rogue can debuff. So so maybe like have it have a similar mechanic with Fekka, but like the variant would be so good that you don't always want to play debuff. Or... I see. But so you have the option. Like exactly. Mm. Yeah. I'm not sure what Fraction is. Fraction? Yeah. They should bring back Fraction. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, are they talking about... Uh, okay, it might be one game. old spell or something like that. Mm. Like a damage share thing or... Right, I'm not entirely sure if you want to tell us more in the chat. What do you mean by Fraction? Um, shall we move on to the quick fire round and get the energy back up a bit? Uh, rebuff yeah, sure. Ataraxia. Uh, How yeah, do you mean Ataraxia rebuff Viper? By the way, Viper is a our English community sapu. is a caster that brings a lot of excitement and knowledge into the PvP scene. And if you're not watching sapu, you're watching Viper. There's no two ways about it. It's the only one that does it good and well in the English world. And he's saying that they should rebuff Atarax. I'm not entirely sure what rebuffing would mean. It's good now. You sustain 25, the quarter of the damage. But you get the penalty of being gravitated. But I'm not entirely sure how they could change it moving yeah, I forward. Could, I could shed a bit of light on that. Um, I I agree. Um, like If Atarax went back to what it was, which is basically block, block the full line, it would be, it would be pretty nice. Because... Oh! Yeah, hundred percent. Exactly. In the wow. past, Ataraxia would block a hundred percent of a line, and they only changed it because in PVM, um, the monsters sometimes would like pass turn because in the in the code probably they would see that the damage that they do in the next attack is zero, so they would just pass turn sometimes. Oh. Um, but then and so because Ankama can't really or doesn't know how to fix like their <laughs> their AI, so they so they just like nerfed Ataraxia instead. And so all FICA players took a hit. Um, wow. And that's a, that's a bit sad. <laughs> but Atraxia is still a, is still a great spell. Um, mm. Yeah. And um, a lot of 
well, I don't know if most people know this, but it only blocks one line. So if you get hit by multiple lines, it's not that effective to have it. Um, mm. There's like some weird interaction with poisons. Some poison would get blocked. Some other poisons would just go through Ataraxia and your Ataraxia will kind of be useless. Um, and there's other things with Ataraxia where you can't use Ataraxia on a sacrifice person or, or on someone inside the Aegis. There, yes. Th yeah, so... So Ataraxia, yeah, I think you should go back to blocking 100% and they should just fix their their monster AI. Yeah, that is really good. I did not know that. But one thing for sure is that Ataraxia is a bit convoluted in some cir circumstances, like their interaction with some uh, circumstances, like uh, the Aegis, as you said. That's, you cannot place it on someone that is within it, but you can place it on the Aegis itself and it will uh, take soak up the first hit that it, the first line of damage which is really cool yeah that's quite cool uh, there's also some other changes uh, that we haven't mentioned on the fecker where you can take damage on behalf of someone else now if you place the aegis on yourself this did not yeah. exist on the fecker before right that's true and do you see any I... utility in this as a mechanic at all or is it just a gimmick it's useful i never see anyone use it to be honest no but yeah but it's it's uh i think it's useful to have a sacrifice um, especially, I can see it being useful um, if you're playing your own team, because if you're playing with random people or maybe like your friends on a mono account, not everyone will know that um, you have this option to sacrifice them, and not everyone will like try to focus on protecting you as a sacrificer. I think yeah. a lot of sacrifices, a lot of sacrifices can probably relate that like mm. you have the option to sacrifice your friends. But not everyone <laughs> plays around it effectively. So like, if you yes. use it, you're probably gonna die super fast. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I like my Atarax and PVM at least. It takes up because you know mobs will not use leak pie to remove it and then hit you with their <laughs> wrath. They just yeah. use their first spell and it's super useful. The other thing I use it for is if there's a mob that can swap positions. Like um, uh, Cannibal and Chain, the Halo Perry that he summons will just swap with anything within 10 range cell. I just Ataraxia three people. Now you can use it three times. So you gravity the panda itself and then the Fekka can gravity everything else. Boom! The whole team is gravity turn one. You don't need... Who needs into the fold when you have Ataraxia? Exactly. And <laughs> but the well, cost the, is a bit high. Actually, now that you mention it, it's a bit sad that into the fold was nerfed to on being only one turn. So like... Yes, it's, it it feels kind of um, intuitive in to teeth. always use mm. uh, excursion glyph um, mm. because it's it's always going to be more useful than having like uh, a grab glyph that you can only place for one turn and that's like that has a big cooldown. So I think right now the 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 choice of variance between these two should always be excursion glyph. Like the, there's oh. a very rare occasions where you should <laughs> Oh no. no! I'll have to disagree with you on that one. I don't play my Fekka mobility at all. My Fekka is a stationary thing that places that green glyph that enhances everyone's ability to do damage yeah. and invulnerabilities. No other class does it better. Close combat, long range, stoke up damage. Uh, especially, I mean, it's going to depend for sure on your composition, on your your the classes that you're using. If you're using, yeah. for example, for example, an Elio trope, which places the portals for everyone, and then you have a tank panda, of course yeah. you don't need excursion glyph. Like mm. you're never gonna be moving. You have the portal set up for you. But oh, if you're oh, playing oh. on like mono account, for example, where you will only play your own class and you can't you you can't really rely on other people to do the yeah. work for you or to help you or to consider your turn into their turn, <laughs> you, you oh, need excursion God. glyph. You need a way to move around. <laughs> And be more flexible in the fight. True, true, true. That makes sense. About the only time I use Excursion Glyph is when I'm doing Fawn Roshi in Dreams. Then I like the ability to just summon uh, an Aura Glyph, you know, the staff, and then swap yeah. places or something like that. It's super useful for mobility, but only in certain circumstances. Fab, thank you very much for that. Uh, do you have any other pending thought that you want to get out there about the Faker? Yeah. Because I know very few people know it as intimately as you do. Yeah, so uh, going back to Ataraxia, it's actually a double-edged sword because you can use it, uh, you can use your gra the gravity state as something good, as you said, uh, to block a monster swap, but it can also be bad if you're using it on an ally that's planning on moving around in the map. So, Zelor. 
Yeah, and <laughs> exactly. And this goes back to playing on mono account because let's say you have you have a few allies, you don't know what they're going to do in their turn, but I, I give a gravity state to my Xeller ally, but my intention is to make is to reduce the damage that they're going to no. take. So I have a good intention, but I don't take into consideration the fact that they have a pre premonition a bit yeah. far and they plan to go super mm. far, move some stuff away, and it, it ruins their turn completely. So, <laughs> yeah. so be careful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you ended the man's career with two AP. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That'll teach them to play Zellor anyway. <laughs> That's a bit harsh, my friend. <laughs> we have a running joke because Gluto plays a Zellor and I play a Cry. And he's like, what is a Cry anyway? Because it's super easy, Crab Rain. I'm like, what yeah. is a Zellor anyway? It doesn't make any sense. Playing with 30 AP and dealing less damage than four of mine. <laughs> yeah, it's a, Why it's waste a bit the time? Sad. I have an opinion yeah. about Xeller. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, Xeller is underappreciated not only by players but also by Ankama. Mm. Uh, right now, it's the Xeller is not in a good state. Like, it's not going to be super enjoyable to play. But I think they've announced um, they're going to be making some more changes to Xeller yes. uh, this yeah. this year. Mm. Um, so maybe it's going to be better to face um, monsters in PVM with Xeller, but. Yeah, Xeller is a fun class to play. You just get blocked a bit of everywhere, a bit everywhere with monsters putting gravity on stuff, yeah. and survivability. Big single point of failure uh, that is gravity. The moment you see that happen to you, boom, that's it. Your class is rendered essentially useless, which no other class can suffer from something like that. Right, we've got one last round to do. Get the adrenaline going. Put cover on the spot, ask him about his appreciation for aesthetics, classes, dungeons, and things of that nature. We usually end on something like that because it gets the mood going. So I'm going to make sure the music matches the vibe as well. <laughs> I'm sure people won't see that uh, when I post the video on YouTube, there won't be any music on it. But for now, we want there to be as much interaction as possible. So chat. If you think something that Cover said is funny, you disagree with one of his choices, you have a better thing to add, please do answer the questions in your own way in the chat. I'm always fascinated by the answers I get for the quick fire round. Right, you've already spoiled it for us, but what class do you think? Oh, sorry, for first of all, are you ready, Cover? Are you adequately nervous and ready for this? <laughs> yeah, let's do this. I'm ready. Uh, a bit of a stretch. Uh, check the poster. Let's go. Right. The rules are very simple. You know them already. First thing that comes to mind and then we can have a laugh and maybe you can explain your choice. But the idea is to put you on the spot and not think too much about it. I know it's a big departure from the way you do things, but please try and play along as best as you can. <laughs> right. You've spoiled this already, but what class do you think is the most underrated currently in the game? Uh, Masquerader. Oh! I thought you yeah. were going to say, that. holy shit. No. Nope. <laughs> you go, it threw me off immediately. <laughs> yeah, What's most going on underrated, there? Most underrated yeah. is Masquerader by far. If you look at, I don't know if you've seen the charts, but sometimes, like, I've seen the, like some charts a few times with, like, most played classes to yes. least played classes. And Masquerader is, like, always at the bottom. But when uh. I play it, and when I see other people play it, Masquerader is such wow. a good class. And yeah. the feel you get when playing it, like if you try to play it as a support, it feels so good because it actually works really well. Um, yeah. Like if the shields you can provide for a few AP, um, the way you can change masks to access different different spells, it makes you think uh, yes. in a way that's enjoyable. Yeah. Um, and you have access to debuff. Your damage is really nice. Uh, so it, it covers like a bit of everything you want in a support class. Mm -hmm. um, and also you get you get the fun of doing damage and it's really it's it's really a useful and a good class um yeah. you can play it as pushback as well you, you have access to so many different builds yeah. that, that work on the class um that i think masquerader is just very underrated it's very enjoyable if you haven't tried it i'd say mm. i recommend playing masquerader yes, 100% and, and if you're like whether you're playing on multi account or mono account you can make you can adapt, adapt the way you play Masquerade a little, a little bit. If you're playing on Mono account, you, you want to play it with like, you want to have damage for sure. And you'll always have access to the shields. Yes. But if you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And if Regardless you're playing, of build. Exactly. And, and if you're playing on like with your own team, 
you can use it as like a shield machine and a, an evolving machine. You have spells to like reduce the damage taken by, uh, not reduce, but um, Ginga. Yeah, no, not that, Ginga. but like increase. Right. I think it's um, I forgot the name, but it's a spell to like make enemies take more damage at a distance or in melee transfiguration. I think it is. What? Um, I've never played the spell. I need to find yeah. out what it does. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's called transfiguration. Oh wow! Does it vuln the the entity you cast it on? It does vuln. It's, um, it's it lasts only one turn and it has a CD. But if you're going for burst turns, it's really very very good. You have if you have like an Elio with an IOP, um, and you need like additional classes to support, uh, your panda that's tanking, or support by vulning the enemies for yeah, burst yeah, class yeah. for yeah for for burst turns. With Cloudy on, Masquerader is a good class to, to add to your yeah. composition. It can give 10% extra damage range to the IOP that is going to rest through a portal and vaughn the mob 20% extra. Yeah, what? and shield. Uh, oh, you can shield your ally. If you know that like, there's like some damage that's going to go to the whole map, like for example, you're doing uh, <laughs> uh, the Shoko priest Priestess, you yeah, know she's yeah, going to yeah. ring her bells and hit the whole map. You can, yes. you can use Plastron, even though usually you're safe with your Panda in front tanking. Uh, you can still use Plastron on, on all the, the, the members that are at the back of the map. Uh, yeah, and the traction. You know you're, you're gonna get hit. Yeah. yeah, oh my god, I love my mask, honestly. It's the class that is the most reliable in times of trouble. A bit more reliable than the Fekka, because even if you are 1 max HP, it can keep you alive for so long. <laughs> so 3k shields every turn, no problem, sure, 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 for the rest of the fight. <laughs> Cool. And Kame is listening. What would you like them to change next update? Something magical. You mention it now, they change it immediately. Change, oh. add, remove in the game. One thing. This is so hard. You're putting on the spot here. There's like <laughs> That's so the many idea. Things I, there's so many things I complain about. but I, Top one. I number one. What comes to uh, mind? <laughs> man, this is so difficult. I don't have anything in my mind right now. Uh... I have my suspicions. I will tell you about after once you tell us. <laughs> One thing that changes immediately right. next update. Game is perfect. Don't change it. <laughs> it's not perfect at all. I mean, there's a lot of bugs everywhere. Yeah, number um, one, what comes to mind? <laughs> okay, so I'd say separate uh, spells into PvP and PvM. So like Oof. you have... Yeah, so basically the spell does something in PvM. It does something else in PvP. That yes. way, um, the changes made for PvP d does not affect people that only play for PvM and vice versa. And everyone has a nice time playing their class and no one gets mad. That is remarkable. We've put this question to the main developer, Papino, who's in charge of the production of Dofus and Dofus Retro right now. And he said, sadly, it is not something that they are even considering at the moment. Whereas it's... It's a solution that pretty much everyone is saying, this is going to solve all your problems. You're no longer nerfing clashes because it's super powerful in PvP and making it useless in PvM. Fantastic choice. I really, really like that. I was secretly hoping you'd say to move the zap to Feudala instead of leaving it <laughs> central. <laughs> That's a good one. But, <laughs> but there you go. What is the class that is overrated? Too much overrated. I think everyone has to answer the same thing. It has to be the Kra. No. <laughs> There's no need for that. <laughs> what a big surprise. Uh, yeah. Cross, do I need to explain myself? Cross is the most played class. <laughs> it is the easiest class to play as well. Yeah. Um, there are some things you can do that are very spectacular if you're a very good crop player. But mm. this is a very small percentage of the crop population. Mm. And the, like, even though crop got nerfed quite a bit, it's still super easy to play, super efficient. Um, and it's it's strong. Like if if you know like you're starting from scratch and you just want to farm a lot of stuff, have an easy time, pick a crawl. Yeah. Like yeah, it, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, uh, a lot of people have answered in the past uh, with things like panda because of the over reliance that people have on it in PVM. That is a to good the choice. point where you can't really consider doing anything difficult without having a tank panda to position and stuff like that. But yeah, Cry is also up there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it uh, I mean, if I can yeah. put a word in for, for Panda as well. Um, okay. 
Everyone's there's... catching strays today. Coverers in the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like no it is safe. overrated, but <laughs> there are other options for tanking that mm. are very enjoyable to play and that a lot of people don't know. You can play mm. Elio as a tank, for example, and provide portals for your team by being next to the monsters. This wow. is a very fun way to play, and you don't have to use a panda, and it's more entertaining to watch. And like if you're tired of the the same old school stuff with panda, you, you bring some variation to your fights, and you can have Thank an Elio tanking. That's yeah. brilliant, remarkable. Um, you've done a lot of questing. You've done a lot of PVM. You did say that you've done pretty much all of the dungeon achievements, so 100% from level one to level 200. What dungeon do you think it's just perfectly well designed it's just brilliant nothing to change about it okay there's a lot, there's a, a lot of people that are going to disagree with what, I, what i'm going to say <laughs> we but, like those <laughs> answers <laughs> but i really like the protozoar dungeon oh the my belly god of the whale. you didn't <laughs> the belly of the whale oh no <laughs> chat cover your ears i'm gonna remove this from post editing <laughs> Yeah. Holy smokes. <laughs> so, well, that makes me more surprised to know why and ask you the reverse of that question. Holy smokes, coverer. Go on. <laughs> All right. So, the belly of the whale, I think it's it's well designed. Um and maybe I have this 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 uh idea because I play a lot on mono account and huh? the fact that the dungeon um changes based on the party size not only if you're four and more so like usually if you're five members or five players or six players the monsters will adapt and there will be one more monster but here in this dungeon because the mechanic is linked to a summon that get that like the mela moeba that gets um summoned it's hp different based on how many players are in the fight it kind of works well for mono account and uh, multi-account so you can do the dungeon alone you can do the dungeon as two people and the dungeon wow. will adapt to your composition um so mm. i really like that about this dungeon and that you don't you don't really find this aspect in other dungeons in the game no um, the difficulty also, is yeah. fixed the mobs increase for sure uh, uh, there's also the fact that the, the dungeon mechanic is really different from all the other dungeons. Like you have to actually, um, you have to know a certain thing you should do or you should not do <laughs> to, to, to beat certain mobs. It's not about just dealing damage. Yeah. It's, it, it makes you think differently, which I think is really fun. And I wish more dungeons were made that way instead of, because usually what we get now, nowadays is just like a new dungeon. The boss has a ton of HP, he's invulnerable, and it's super hard to make him vuln. And uh, when you do have to do damage, you have, yeah, when you have when you do have to do damage, you have to do so much damage. Uh, it's all based on damage. And I feel like Protozoar, even though it's not an easy dungeon, um, it, it makes you think uh, more than just cast spells to do damage. Fantastic. I Honestly, in the beginning, I was sort of reluctant about your answer, but then it's well thought out and you know exactly why you like it. So we will accept it. <laughs> we still like cover our chat, we still do. It's the most hated dungeon by chat. <laughs> it's the single most hated oh, dungeon. Wow. Always there, up there. Yeah. So conversely, if you were to have an internship at Ankaba and accidentally trip and click a button in a magical keyboard that deletes one dungeon, from existence, which one are you get, getting rid of? Vortex. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, Vortex yeah. is gone. Um, uh. So, okay. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think um, I might have a bit of uh, PTSD with that dungeon. Uh oh. Um, the, the reason being, uh. there was, well, first of all, the design of the dungeon, I don't really like the fact that you, like, there's so much monsters everywhere that it's a bit, a bit of a mess for the whole, mm. f uh, the whole five waves, mm. um, and then the fact that th you have to face the boss, which usually has very different mechanics than the monsters. Um, you have to face the boss at the very end once you've yeah. done all the work for like a full hour. Um, you have to face the boss at the very end, and if you don't know how the boss works, this is the phase where you you, you usually. 
you try something new, you try to see what works, what doesn't work. This is where you practice against the boss. This is where you discover the boss. And if, <laughs> if that's the phase where you learn about it and you die, and you have to redo the whole thing to get to the boss, yeah. it's it's really frustrating and you don't want to do that again. So so of course, like there's some solutions where they could add like a checkpoint. There's, they can make it two rooms. But we like that answer. <laughs> Thank you. We <laughs> like that. For sure, there's some solutions to fix uh, this problem. But <laughs> if I had to delete the dungeon in its current state at the moment, that's the one I'd get rid of right away. Fair enough. Now, now the PTSD part <laughs> is because there was once a bug where monsters would take forever to pass their turn. They they take oh, like yeah. two minutes to, to like two full minutes to pass ah. their turn. And during that time, I was actually trying to run a vortex with a few of my guild members. Uh, I, I don't remember if we were doing a specific achievement, but just the fact that there's so many monsters in the timeline and they all have to pass their turn and they all took like <laughs> two minutes each, <laughs> that drove me crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry, I just have to, to be right back uh, somewhere at the sure. door. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> I'll mute up the Discord. Yeah, that is remarkable. If you think about it, it's the one dungeon that I do spare a moment of thought to the first people who have done it to discover the mechanic. <laughs> Imagine getting it wrong and to have another crack at it. You've got to do the whole damn thing for over an hour. Yes, yes, CB, welcome to the chat. Good to see you. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that the dislike is unanimous of this one just not because it's difficult or unachievable but the barrier is so thick the time the lag if you don't have a good machine you're screwed a lot of people have good machines when they reach wave five there's so much going on in the map even with creature mode that they just can't play their turns it's horrible it's nothing to do with the skills the level the knowledge of the players the gear it's all mechanical and beyond your control you get into a place that is laggy as hell the timeline is but bursting with entities the map is bursting with entities and they take two minutes to pass their turn each <laughs> exactly <What? laughs> and, and the game is known for being like um accepting of different devices uh you don't have to play at this semi simultaneously as other players like everyone has yeah. their their own turn it's yeah. it, like everyone knows you can play it with a potato pc you can play it with a very nice very strong specs pc so <laughs> yeah. then you get into vortex and you just struggle through what? the dungeon less and less so even though even so even more so now with the unity release and everything we've uh, known about it and by the way just as a quick um, uh, shout out to uh, the event tab on the international pub i've populated it with the events that are happening right now but also the next ankama live that i will be live translating that is to do with unity on the 15th so in about a week's time there will be uh, a better more than a week, nine days. There will be another on camera live where we'll get to see the classes again, the gear, a lot more of the things we're curious about Unity. Why is that? It's because uh, they have a stand at the Japan Expo and they will give people actual testing facilities. They will be able to use a computer and see how Unity feels like. And that is shortly before they release the beta in August, which I'm so looking forward to. I'm ready. I freed up my schedule to go to the Ankama convention on the 31st of December, but also do a lot of testing in Unity, make a lot of videos about it. So I'm really looking forward to that. If anyone wants to know when these events are taking place, we put everything at the top of the Discord server in the event tab. It will list all the events happening, the time, where, some more information. That was just as an aside because we brought up the conversation. Fabulous. Any more on Vortex? Aside from just deleting it and yeah, <laughs> the that's PTSD. It. Yeah. Really bad dungeon. Bad dungeon design. Fantastic, fantastic. Um I've noticed this about myself, and it's a quick fire round question. There are dungeons, if you do enough of them, that you will find that there is one that comes second nature to you. Super easy. But if you said that out loud you'd get lynched because people think it's really hard it's so difficult what is that dungeon for you uh wait you have to repeat that, that you have to repeat okay. that question for me really complex dungeon according to everyone but for you it's a walk in the park you don't even activate your brain so easy to you huh um i guess well i do activate my brain a little bit but not as much as other people i'd say 
Count Her Herberg. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'd say I'm wow. pretty good at the rotations. Yeah. Um, And I find it really fun to do. A lot of people struggle okay. with it. They hate it. <laughs> they don't want to do anything. They want to even, they don't want to come close to it. Um, But I'd say, like, if, for example, I have to run count for, for a quest or something, I, I don't despair. Yeah. Like, I, I just yeah. go do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm good with dealing with the mobs with great difficulty at a glacial pace and then when I'm one on one v one with them that's it it gets out of hand it's a dungeon that I dislike because I've made this joke before after trying it a couple of times I have to think about where to take my hand in order to grab a bottle of water or a glass it <laughs> just messes with the that's funny. cables inside my head <laughs> yeah that's actually happened to me uh with uh, yeah. the heliotrope class you when you like you play so much with it and it has like a complete different mechanic than what you're used to that mm. at some point even if you leave the game you start thinking that way but, like mm. i've at some point i've played heliotrope so much that i would just like imagine myself placing a portal somewhere to like move somewhere <laughs> else in real life or like yeah you crazy. play too much dofus if that happens <laughs> If I need if to I grab something, support in here, I can go to the kitchen straight. <laughs> exactly. If I need to, to grab something that's far from me, just put a portal, <laughs> grab it through, and then I'm Amazing. done. Amazing. And conversely, what is the boss dungeon mechanic that you just can't wrap your head around? What is your Count Harburg for everybody else? Uh, something that's... Uh, hmm. It's not well, difficult and... Yeah. It's difficult because I'm an endgame player and I've mm. done like all dungeons. I've passed them all with all achievements. Um, something that's really hard to do. Um, not mechanic wise, but in terms of the achievement, maybe I'd say this one. I'd say the Eliocalypse Storm. Ooh, um, unconventional dungeon. Yeah, so, and for this dungeon, it's because it regroups a bunch of other dungeon bosses. So yeah. their mechanics kind of overlap and you have to choose like <laughs> what to kill first. And if you yeah. have to, so this achievement I was referencing is impertinence. Impertinence. Yeah. I saw you so, made a video and unlabeled the auto win. That The disrespect is palpable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The auto win is mostly because of the comp, the, the composition with the composition, two pandas yeah. and the strategy yeah. that you use to like make everyone stay near um, an entity that's on the opposite team. Um, nice. So so yeah, this dungeon it's it's difficult. Um, it's very very difficult. A lot of people ask for help with it, um, and especially the impertinence achievement. Uh, it's crazy because I've had a lot of trouble with it at some point because I didn't know that the armiscreant uh, state that teleports you back would still remain even after you kill servitude. Oh my god! So once so yeah, so it happened to me once that we did impertinence the whole way. And then we got to Servitude, which was like the last boss we had to kill before war. And we killed Servitude, but because the army screen put that state that teleports you back, um, we failed Impertinence. So so we ran to the monster, and then we got to teleport it back, and then Impertinence but, failed. And it's after you pass your turn right next to a monster, thinking you've Ex done everything by the book. Oh, exactly. the pain. Oh, the pain. Tell so, yeah. me your end game without telling me your end game. This is something that is incredible. <laughs> The hardest thing to wrap your head around is that dungeon and impertinence in particular. Coverer, you are quite something, man. <laughs> That's remarkable. <laughs> right. What is the spell or mechanic that has been removed from the game that you miss the most? And my answer to this is uh, critical failure. What is yours? Um, something old so or something uh, that you miss. It's a bit difficult because I haven't been in the game as long as uh, most I people see, yeah. to know mm. like, oh, th there was this spell I really miss. I want it back. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. As I said, like I started really playing the game in 2019. So like what I remember from classes are mostly still there. Mm. There's something that I can remember that was removed, which is like the awesome of this spell to like revive an ally. Oh, let's go. Uh, that's, that's so cool. <laughs> that's what I thought about first when you said this, even though yeah. I... I never really thought about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's I think remarkable. It's, yeah, I think it's fun. <laughs> the the fact that you can revive an ally because yeah. ally doesn't like lose hope as soon as they die. 
they, they can yes. still keep keep watching keep commenting oh. um and you in the hopes that you bring them back i mean that is one way to make awesome orders very viable in pvm again <laughs> yeah and, and definitely a spell to switch off in pvp <laughs> it would be broken. exactly so ideally we'd have like a spell yeah. work differently in pvm and pvp yeah. separation and of church and state yeah. <laughs> yeah awesome awesome uh one thing that is particularly of interest to me which is the design of the game it's one thing that you miss most about the office's looks the attention to detail and i know that is strong with you so you will have noticed a lot of things that you like, dislike about the game. I'm not going to ask you what is the best looking area because I know you've told us already. <laughs> but what area do you think could do with a bit of love? Um, hmm. Refreshment, a redo, an yeah. overhaul, graphics change. The first one I thought of, and I think they're already working on it actually, is the the troll fair, which is yes, like in they the are. Kenya Lake kind of uh, section. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that that area is kind of it looks old, um, and it's not very fun to walk through. Um, yeah, it just looks old. I think uh, fair enough. It's it's due for a remake. Nice. Um, there's only one right answer to this. What is the best combo of items? Good looking hat and cape. Good looking. <laughs> yes, the best looking combo of hat and cape. <laughs> Huh. Do you want a troll answer or a real answer? Yeah, th there's only one right answer, regardless of why. <laughs> but please, by all means, give us both. <laughs> huh. What comes to mind first? If you have to look good in a character, ideally, what would you go for? So what I have currently on my Fekka and what I move, what I what I use the most to move around is in my pod set. I have a, a Bork hat with like a a Bontarian banner. <laughs> what it's uh it's really trollish but yeah <laughs> i find it really funny because i'm a brackmarian and i put a bontarian banner to represent to like <laughs> with a bork hat so it's like it's really ugly and i try yeah. to like shed some bad lights on bontarians <laughs> when i walk around oh my god and then i have like i i don't know if you noticed but like the bontarian banner you put this in as like um on your shoulders and like as shoulder pads and it's going to replace oh, the, the, the cape that you have so yes. you won't see yeah. the cape so for the yeah. for this reason what i did was i put a zombie cape the one that changes changes your colors to like green Ooh, and yeah it's, like very ugly so i put yeah. this cape that no one can see because i have a montarian banner and then it changes it changes my whole my whole uh color palette and <laughs> that way if i put the work hat on and it matches with the oh, rest of my my of colors. Uh, it's it's really funny. It's really trollish, yeah. and I just walk around everywhere everywhere with this. Um, yeah, you must get some... recognized a lot with that unique yeah, sure. look. <laughs> I, I get reactions as well. Nice. <laughs> but is there is there any serious answer if you were to <laughs> max ugliness? Yes, Neo. Uh, is yeah. there any good looks that you would, if you were sincere about? Uh, yeah, great. I do have a serious look for my Fekka. Um, I don't know if I could share one with you. Um, Just the names but, of the items. Yeah, but, yeah the names if you have a photo, items, we can show it's it. It's difficult for me to like bring up the names in my in my head. I see. Yeah. Do you play the game in English or French, by the way? I played in English. Nice. But like, I know a lot of names of uh, monsters and items in French as well because. Yeah. Like I have access to that information, and I nice, speak yeah, with yeah. like French uh, players a lot. Draco is mainly I French, care. isn't it? Sorry. The the server you play in is mainly French Draconeros. Yes. Uh. Yeah. It's mainly. But there is a kind of uh, kind of, still a big English community. Hmm. So I shared the uh, my character with you. Oh, brilliant! Did you know that we have a bot that does that in house? I don't expect everyone to know this, but I will make a uh, sort of ad video for all the various bots that we have. It can generate a little spinning gif of your character if you put slash spin on any channel, but ideally bot spam, and put the link to your um, Ankama profile, you know, the character profile. It will ping you a photo like this and then send you a spinny version of that. <laughs> that That's thing. very cool. I but didn't know. Let me put it up 
but the actual only true answer is uh, Inky Vale and uh, Solomonk. Nah, <laughs> so, I don't agree. Well, this look, this look is sick. It's amazing about Solomonk and Inky Vale. Is the only <laughs> acceptable answer. <laughs> no, I can agree <laughs> to that. <laughs> He protests. Nope, that, he doesn't uh, like it. Fair you should enough. have answered this. In, uh, you, should, you should have asked me what's the most overrated <laughs> items for, uh, for oh. cosmetics. And I would have said Solomonk and Incubus. No. Well, maybe that's a question I'll start adding from now on. Right. Let's finish on one last quick fire round. But this one, please do take your time if you want to think about it. I've asked it once. And I have been blown away by the answers. Because most of us will interact with a small number of sidekicks. But we'll know why. There will be some big utility that you found in one in particular, in one situation. And they're usually remarkable finds. What is a sidekick that you want to tell us about? That you found some great utility in? Or something cool that you've discovered in the sidekick portfolio? I feel like you probably already know the answer to this. Oh. And yeah, and it's the Archiduke. Um, oh yes yes, yes. <laughs> in the solo videos yeah but yes. please go and tell us for posteriority why so archiduke is a sidekick <laughs> that no one ever plays but basically you can it's actually useful in a few different fights um it was useful in the move of expedition as you saw from a few of my videos um see a few of my most recent videos where you can trap stuff with the summoning of the archiduke um and the it's crazy because the, the the level of understanding you need to 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 like grasp the whole concept of the sidekick is actually pretty high. Wow. Um, even even I didn't look into it that far, but you can place a bunch of I, f I forgot the name of the what of the summons, but um you can place a, you can place a bunch of static summons, mm -hmm. and it create it creates like a lot of swaps with the caster, and you can swap with like other stuff depending on the spells you use. So I still have to discover it fully, and but like one, if you master this, you can you can cheese a lot of stuff. I've cheesed mm. uh, move of expedition, but you can also cheese like gain solo uh, the bounty. Oh wow! Because you can summon twice a, a turn every turn. Exactly, and for gain, wow. like you want to have skulls next to his spawning position, so that well next to his starting position, so that yes. because he has a spell to swap places, and if he swaps places with his uh, with a skull that's next to him and then runs super far away and tell and goes invisible and teleports you know exactly where he is because he swapped with the skull so you know where the new position of the skull is um yes so like there's yeah there's ways to like cheese different fights um for now i only know like move of expedition and gain Woo! but um, honestly this is the question that i ask moving forward that delivers every time We've discovered that there is one that can blow up the Helmina mobs if they're invisible within line of sight with one click. Yeah. It kills that one and makes the other one invisible. Now we learn that this one can do gain, uh, the Moorwolf Expedition. Uh, Jay in the chat is saying that it can do Proto as well because it's useful for mobility and having summons and close combat, some requirements it can fill them. Thank you very much for that. Did you have anything um, else to add about the, the Duke? Um, Zelor. <laughs> not not about the duke but like yeah. there's a few other uh sidekicks that are really useful and that people mm. don't really make use of yeah um, so like usually when you think ap reduction in pvm you think like okay it's useless it's not gonna work mobs have like 20 ap um it's not gonna work but yeah there's sidekicks that are super good in ap reduction um i can think of whole crap um, that's my favorite one. There's another one that's kind of like a panda sidekick, uh, panda looking uh, sidekick. Um, that's good as well. If you combine this sidekick with like a class like an AP reduction, you can actually bring a boss to almost zero AP, AP or close wow. to enough. Like, let's say nullify their turns. Exactly, you can nullify their turns. Sometimes a mo um, like even if they have twenty AP. Their, their spell will have like 5 AP, 4 AP. So if you bring them to like 3 AP, they can't play their turn. I've mm. done that for fun, like on a few bosses, and it worked. Um, and I feel like no one does this, but it's it's pretty fun to do. So if yeah. you haven't discovered this, this is, like try to play with the whole crap and like a Fekka AP reduction or Oof. Exiler AP reduction with the whole crap. It's really My cool. God. 
yeah, on any trough that can reduce the AP reduction and AP reduce himself. And deal damage on lines. They can vault you so that if you have if you suffer an AP reduction attempt, you get more damage. That's Remarkable. True. Thank you for that. That is spectacular. I told you guys, chat, this question may sound silly. But it delivers. Every time it delivers. Right. I can't say this enough, but I love the format. Thank you very much for proposing this chill conversational where you asked me some things and I asked you some things. Uh, this adaptation has been quite successful in my estimate. Thank you very much for that cover. I loved every piece of the conversation so far. And I'd like to end as a thank you gesture, like I do with pretty much every content creator that agrees to come on the podcast, is I want to open the floor to you. I want you to speak to the audience that we have here. Tell us what you have exciting in life. Get as excited about some projects that you have. And I know that you spoiled a couple that we're already looking forward to. And on the second portion, if you don't mind, can you please tell us how to find you online? What are your social media presences? Where are you hanging out mostly? And how we can best support you? Cover, thank you very much for being here. The floor is yours. No problem. So, um... And thank you for this opportunity. Um, I really appreciate it. Basically, what I have coming for the future, um, well, as you can see on my channel, it's been like maybe a month since I haven't uploaded, and that's because I'm working on a video that takes some time to edit. Um, so there's, I don't want to spoil too much about this, but it's coming soon. Um, and it's related to the, the newest update that we have at 2.72. Um, apart from this, I already said I have a bunch of guides in preparation, whether it be um, a tutorial or um, a guides about specific mechanics that uh, people well aren't explained very well. Um, I have like I have so many videos pre prepared to come. Um, I have something with Unity with unity coming soon like uh we have the beta in august and we have the official release of unity in the end of december um i plan to to move to multi-server and start from scratch and this is a big change for me because i mostly play a mono account as you have seen from me speaking uh with my experience and this is going to be the first time i build my own team i like so it's going to open up so many so much more opportunities for me uh, so much more content is going to be possible doing dungeons with a lot of different classes. Um, yeah, so just try a lot of stuff. Um, farming dreams. Uh, this is one, a plan of mine. So like farming really high level dreams on mono what? account. I have, I'm, I, I like, I have the ambition to like go really far in dreams, but no one does. And because I'm alone, I can't play with my, with my own, uh, my own team with four accounts. Um, I can't really go that far. I think the max I went is like four, four fifty, uh, yeah, floor four fifty with like random people. So it's a bit hard to do on uh, on mono account. So really, I'm probably going to be live streaming live streaming more when uh, Unity comes out, and that's going to be on my YouTube channel. Um. So yeah, so this is what's coming up in the future. Um, and also, you can find me on well on my youtube channel for sure i check reddit so uh quite a bunch of times i have like a few ideas related to reddit and dofus for for a few videos that's coming that are coming up um and also like on discord i uh, i'm on a bunch of different discord servers like the draconeros uh, discord server um well the dofus international pub um, I'm on the Feka, uh, the Feka Discord. I'm, yeah. So, I'm I'm also on the Astro Zap Discord. So, and and if ever you want to just like message me on Discord and ask me questions or just talk to me, I'll probably answer. Um, apart from this, I'm planning in the future of making, as I said earlier, I'm planning to make, uh, my own Discord channel, uh, my own Discord server for my YouTube channel. I mean, and then. I don't even, like I don't even have a Twitter page, you know. So I need to expand a bit on that. Um, and if you want to support me, like really, like leave thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Um, I like to have engagement. I I feel like there's not enough engagement on my, on my videos uh, around my content. 
there's like I I really like to discuss a lot like you've seen in this podcast like there's so many things that I can talk about and that I have important information about so uh and yeah it, it's a, it's a pleasure for me to speak about that that stuff um and I have a few friends with which I speak a lot about uh this kind of stuff they they have a lot of good ideas we talk about uh what could happen in, in the future of Dofus and stuff like that but uh, those are not videos that I release really but I could so there's like a lot of ideas there um but yeah uh, again I don't get paid to do this but and even though I spend like a lot of hours doing this it would be fun to be paid so maybe I'll put up like a Patreon or something if you want to support me uh it's not there yet but eventually maybe I'm not monetized so yeah it takes a while on YouTube thank you very much for that I appreciate it I try to put the links on the chat as we go so if you want to see Coverer's YouTube channel, it's on the chat. Uh, if you want to see his uh, Reddit page, he's very active in there. And I know that because I'm exclusively on Reddit all the time on my phone. And I see his quality posts, replies and guides are usually posted there first. But thank you very much for that. I appreciate it, Coverer. I hope you won't be a stranger to the podcast. And for everyone else, uh, he is active, highly active on the... Um, at the international pub and highly active in dms if you ever want to ask him a question collaborate do anything he's in the content creator channel send him a private message let's show him some love with interactions comments likes on his youtube videos because that's what keeps the man going and he said so we must do thank you ever so much for passing by cover i really appreciated the conversation and yeah I'm not surprised it has gone for three and a quarter of an hour. <laughs> it's remarkable. It was interesting through and through. And Thank I you. hope to see you around again. Thank you for and having me. 